I'm going to take a roll call for the members that we have present here tonight. Uh, our staff member, we have Hervé Hammond here. Uh, myself, I'm Liz Geiger, chairman. We have David Humphrey here, our vice chair. Leslie McCauley, Alexander Lopatinsky, Cheryl Green, and David Riley. Missing staff, we have Sean Brown, Anya Janis, and Rebecca Morrison that can't be here this evening. Um, our first agenda, our second agenda item is to welcome a new member that we are going to push to our January agenda. I had her starting in December, but she will be here in January, so sorry about that. And we will move that to the end of the January agenda so we can uh, get to know her a little better and ask questions. Um, if after this meeting, number three, if you guys find you'd like another device, <coughs> You know, to juggle stuff and see more. If it's difficult to see, let, let me know. We'll put a note into uh, Greer to hook us up for extra devices, whatever you guys might need. Um, all right, getting into applications for this evening. Our first agenda item is uh, Aquarius 8 at uh, ARB 45, but I believe Jill Grabowski is sick this evening, so she is not here. And we're going to skip to number two. Number two is ARB number 59. That is Spring Grove Cemetery with Mike Murray. I do not see Mike here as well, so we are going to go to number three. Lucky you guys. Um, ARB number 47 and number 48 and number 49, which are the reconstruction or the renovations, upgrades, updates of the elementary schools for Henley, Homeschool, and Royal School. So, welcome guys. Thanks for being here. Introduce yourselves for the record. If you guys are going to be speaking, I need you up there on record on camera with these gentlemen. <laughs> Puts the pressure on you guys. Can, you, Lauren, you can sit. You guys can sit right there, but be on presentation. Be close together. You, do you want to sit? Do you want to sit, Lauren? Are you guys going to be speaking, or are you going to yes. be sitting? You are. Well, I think when they come up here, they can Perfect. reintroduce themselves. Perfect. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Yeah. Um, Chairman Geiger, members of the Architecture Review Board, thank you for having us. This is our second time in front of you. Uh, for the record, my name is Eric Kyer, KGD Architects. Here representing the town of Darien and Darien Public Schools. Eric, did you just spell your last name just for minutes? It's Eric with a K, Kyer, K A E Y E R. K A E Y E R. E R I K. E R I K? E R I K, no C. And then K A E Y E R. And you're representing Henley? Sir? Are you representing Henley School? What's your company name? Henley again? Homes and Royal. All three. Okay. Yes. Company name is K G and D Architects. Thanks, Eric. Here with me this evening is Lauren Meyer, project manager from KG and D, and our landscape architect, uh, Sean Reagan. And so uh, they're both here to. Uh, answer questions and, and Sean's going to do the presentation on the landscape architecture portion. Great. And that's Raven, R-A-V-E-N. R-A-G-A-N. G-A, Raven. Can't hear. Great. So since we've been before you before, uh, we thought that we would, uh, you want to change the closing door? We will go through the, the projects, uh, but we'll go a little bit faster this time through the projects and we'll slow down are related to the issues that you brought up this last time. Great. Uh, you had four major comments, and we want to make sure that we address those comments this evening. The first one was integrate the old and new. I think you'll see that as we're discussing the, the three projects. The second was the entrances, and uh, what we can do to all three entrances. And the third was the materials, mostly related to the brick and whether the brick should match or be a dissimilar material or color, and the, the last was landscaping. And so we uh, obviously have Sean here this evening to talk about landscaping. First project is Hindley, Hindley Elementary School, and this is a view of the existing main entrance. So this is what you look at when you're uh, driving up and when you're parking in front and walking towards the door. And it's important to see this, uh, this view because when we're talking about the uh, removal of the existing library and restoration of the original entrance, which would be used as a, a bus drop off and pick up entrance, this entrance is still the main entrance. The school is planning to maintain it as the main entrance as such. And I think one of uh, your comments this last time is what could we do to this uh, area to, to bring it up a little bit in terms of um, both landscape and hardscape. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not going to go into any great detail, but we also shared this slide with the Planning and Zoning Commission, and this is all the different improvements uh, planned on campus. I believe that you have a, a set of all these slides so that uh, on your own you can also go through them. Uh, but in general, we are demolishing the existing portables and demolishing the existing library, and we're putting a one-story addition on the east side of this building, which is uh, that's an existing site plan on the top right there, and east is the top of the page. For some reason, this does not want to stop in place. Okay, so this is uh, a rendition from above, looking at the, the west side of the building, which is where the, the buses drop off and pick up. It shows the plaza that's being created there um, in place of the existing 1970s lot, uh, library, which you can see uh, the, connector, the, the connection point at the top right photograph. This shows uh, the east side of the building and the one-story addition that's being proposed on the east side, which is for all special subjects, art, music, world language, and the learning commons. Oh, I need to stop and go back for a second. We, we have two members that were supposed to be here this evening and both had um, uh, challenges. Jill McCammon, who's one right. of the chairs of the Hindley Homes and Royal Committee, uh, she couldn't be here. She's a busy woman this evening and has multiple meetings to be at. And the other is uh, Chris Price, and Chris Price was planning to be here up until about two hours ago when he found out that uh, he was sick with COVID. So I, I just apologize for stopping, but I wanted to make sure that for the record that you knew why those two members weren't here. And they're chairs of the building committee? They're both correct? chairs of the building committee. Right. And, and you met them last time. They were here at the last meeting. Right. Hmm? This is the end of the no, sorry. Yeah, I it doesn't, it doesn't do it. It doesn't do it. It doesn't go back there. So this is an aerial, and it shows the existing conditions. And then uh, this is a, a rendition of the proposed addition and renovations that we're proposing on this campus. In red arrows are the areas on the uh, north side of the campus that are being modified for uh, vehicular circulation as, post, as well as pedestrian circulation. This shows the renovations to the plaza areas. On the left there, you'll see when uh, Sean gets up here to do a little presentation, he'll show what we're doing at the main entrance in terms of upgrades for landscape and hardscape. It shows the new plaza and bus loop uh, area at the bottom of the page, and the new addition and hardscape playground space on the east side of the building. One of the main uh, modifications to this project, actually from a site plan point of view, is we've extended the bus uh, drop-off pickup line, which originally was, had, was extended to the north. We are now extending it to the south. So that's what you can see at the far bottom right of uh, the page up there, is that we've extended it down to this towards the south property line. And what that does is it does the same amount of um, bus queuing that we wanted on campus, while at the same time separating and better uh, providing uh, circulation for um, parents dropping off and picking up. So uh, this is the view from the back. You can see at the bottom of the page the existing. It, it, it's not working. It's all right. So, um, shows the back elevation, uh, both existing and proposed. And this is another view of that. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Sean, and Sean can talk about the landscape design. Thank you, Eric. 
Uh, for the record, Sean Reagan, uh, professional landscape architect, registered in the state. Um, from Ty and Bond, and I've been involved in all three schools. I'm going to give you just a quick orientation with the landscape design. So as Eric explained, we have made enhancements to the front entry of, of the building, and I'm going to enlarge those on a future slide. Um, in addition to that, we've, uh, along the addition, excuse me, existing portion of the building here, and along the addition, we've uh, incorporated uh, native shade trees, primarily maples, that are more columnar in, in habit because they're so much tighter to the building there, uh, adjacent to a uh, reconfigured play yard area that's here. Question quickly? Yes. Those are not shown on the slides before. They will be on the renderings, and we can provide the planting plans. The reference, if that would be helpful. I apologize for that. I think there was some renderings done earlier, subsequent to these being finalized. Uh, in addition to that, um, Eric explained the enhancements that are being made along along Green Water Lane here. Christmas uh, ready. The existing drive that's going into the site is being um, uh, landscaped over and consolidated into this island here. The stone wall that is on either side of the pillars is being infilled so that there's a continuation of that native stone material. And then those pillars are being replicated uh, to demarcate the entry point to the new entry that's further south. Play it safe and do it like this. This is an enlarged view that you've seen before of the front um, main entry. Existing, we have a flagpole, uh, a pair of um, excuse me benches, uh, and some um, pear trees that are on either side. Our intent is to preserve the trees that are there due to planting enhancements, including ammonia, um, uh, low ground cover. Um, leave the existing small understory trees that are here and then incorporate in addition to that more ground covers um, Carex, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania sedge um, which is a common material that we're using through all three schools because it's versatile and it's native uh, and it has great texture that is uh, it's not a known surface it's, it's a surface that doesn't need to be maintained in that way we're relocating the benches to create symmetry around the building, which is a more formal entry. Um, adding a pair of um, larger benches with backs and armrests, which would be ADA accessible. Redoing the paving. Currently, we're, this sidewalk is comprised of bituminous walkway up to the entry, as you can see. We're repaving with concrete paving and then enhancing the front entry with brick pavers. We have in mind something with a little bit more um, color to it, such as the papers that I brought here. This is a Glen Gary product called 53DD. Uh, we've used it on several school projects, university projects, and the reason why we like it is it has a more rusticated ap appearance um, and, a, and a more full range color, which we think has character as opposed to more monochromatic red. And what's the design of that? The patterning? Yep. It is an inset of herringbone mm -hmm. with a frame, in this case, of three rows of running bond pattern papers, yeah. which will contrast well with the concrete around it. Flagpole will remain in its current location. So the, the treatments here, besides the hardscape, are mainly enhancements to what's existing right now. Sure, I gotta keep you moving here. Okay, we're, we, we got we got time. This is just one school. We got to move. Oh, okay. So at the front entry, and Eric alluded to this. I'm sorry, I, you haven't seen this, so I was I was sure how much detail. Uh, we're doing a similar treatment with a brick inset pattern. Uh, at the entry, we're doing um, a double pairing of trees, lower trees to not block the views of the building. We're keeping other plantings generally low that, as per the request uh, that we received that during the process, um, and generally similar palette. In the courtyard itself, um, we, you'll see a similar type of design experience incorporated through all three courtyards for the school. In this one, you'll see um, a wood deck material, a raised platform that could be used for performances, formal teaching, and the like. Um, a more playful, rubberized surface that could be 
used for sitting um, and also just informal play, and then the amphitheater style seating arrangement around it. So a flexible space that we're planting with, again, shade trees, mixes of shrub shrubs, both evergreen and deciduous. And then at the front entry, I don't think we need to go down into these details right now, but this is just an enlarged view. Apologize, I'm not sure how I ended up in such a zoom view. Maybe you, you can fix that. Okay, oh, terrific. All right, so I don't need to repeat anything here. This is more the same, so I think at this point that is it. I'm hand it back to Eric. So just in summation, for the Hindley School, uh, the major modifications since you saw this last were the bus loop modification, the main entrance landscape and hardscape, as well as the overall campus uh, planting and design. So for this one, there's no change to the school edition itself. So it's just the driveway and, and landscaping. That's right. Uh, when we get into the materials, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about the materials themselves. I know one of your, your questions had to do with the, um, the brick to match versus a dissimilar. And with further discussion with the client, it was important to keep a, a brick that was to match. <coughs> so in, in all three schools, the bricks are, they're all red bricks, but they're slight, slightly different. You'll see when we get there that we're actually looking to match the adjacent brick as well as the cast stone. And the reason for, in this case, the one story versus the, <coughs> the adjacent building, which is two story, is to bring a, um, additional natural light into the existing facades of the existing building so that um, light that's coming from the east side isn't blocked by the new addition. Lauren, you're going to go to uh, homes now? So we're moving on to homes. So in terms of homes, there is a, there's a major revision related to the front um, addition in terms of the design vernacular, and you'll see that as so we go through the slides. And we'll spend a little bit more time on that. Uh, we've also reduced the disturbance to the woods, which is to the north, as well as uh, there's additional campus planting design that Sean will go through. So just stopping here for a second, these are the existing photographs, both uh, from um, the street as well as from the parking lot. We're proposing a new main entrance. If you look at the upper photograph there, right in the middle, you can see a blue um, canopy. And it's sort of tucked into the corner, and so we spent a lot of time looking at how to create a, a better sense of entrance to this building. existing aerial photograph and uh, mentioned earlier that there's an existing woodlands to remain. You can see on the right side that's that woods that are between the school property and Lake Drive. Uh, last time when we presented in front of you, uh, that woods included a parking lot included uh, stormwater management as well as the addition and the service drive. Uh, two of the th three, or two of the four aspects of that have been eliminated from the uh, woods, and so we have additional parking adjacent to the existing parking lots, and we've relocated that stormwater detention. Uh, now it's currently planned to be underneath the planning field. This shows the three planned additions. We'll focus this evening mostly on the planned addition at the bottom right of the page, which is that L addition, which includes a new entrance vestibule and a connecting corridor to the music suite. Uh, the plan on the left shows the first floor and the right on the second floor. We just focus on the left one for a second here, that L where it says new main entrance. You can see that there's a, 
uh, a vestibule that's canted on the 45, which receives people from the drop-off area, as well as that long corridor that's in front of the cafeteria and leads to the mu two music spaces. And the music rooms are specifically there because it's directly behind the stage and where they have performances, so that there's a nice um, adjacency to those spaces. This is a, a view of the proposed addition from above. <coughs> and we can stop here for a second. Uh, the view from uh, the largest view there on the top right is from the parking lot. You can see in the, on the right side of that, that's the proposed music classroom. You can see the cor connecting corridor, and then the pavilion on the left there, which is the proposed entrance pavilion where the drop-off is. And again, that's been rotated on the 45 generally to, to receive people that are being dropped off. Down at the bottom in the middle, you can see the, the juxtaposition of the existing um, photograph and how the existing entrance is tucked into the corner compared to uh, the proposal here. In, in terms of architectural materials, we're looking at a, a standing seam um, roof with a, a coloration that's to match the slate roof that's on the existing building. It's uh, excuse me, a uh, quick sure. question on the roof. Did you look at uh, possibly composite shingles in the slate pattern as an alternate to the standing seam to, to be a little bit closer to the uh, to the existing? I'm just curious. Uh, we've used them before. The we've used them before in projects uh, successfully. Mm -hmm. um, it'd be worth looking at. Okay. Yeah, just something. Yeah, the standing seam is a bit more of a contemporary look to that roof than. Granted, it is the, you know, the colonnade and, and it has a nice rhythm going to it. It just seems like, in, in terms of making the move to the pitched roof, um, whether look at some alternate choices might just be worth the exercise. They could potentially soften it. Eric, what happens to the old entrance? What, what does that become? Is that still an entrance into the main part of the school? You're referring yeah. to that door? Yes. Uh, that's. Uh, directly off of a, a stairwell, uh, correct, yes. That's actually never really been the main entrance. It's well, always been a side entrance. Been the, school. The, the, the original main entrance is actually uh, facing the street. Okay. Um, if I can go back a slide here. A few more slides, sorry. So this, this is the original main entrance right here. Okay. And uh, the current main entrance is in the, tucked into the corner. This is a stairwell, and that's off, I believe, the, the nurse's suite. Does that get confusing to people? Yeah, or? I think it's, in, it's yeah. My kids go there, and it, you know where to drop them off. I mean, for they people who that. use the school on a regular basis. Okay. So, so right now, that's so, just an aesthetic. Aesthetics well, are great. Uh, yeah. I'm going to try not to zoom in here, but you can see that this is the proposed entrance. That uh, side entrance, which was so apparent in the, that rendered view, uh, we're looking to landscape, and I think Sean can probably go into a little bit more detail there to, to play down that side entrance, or the exit from the stairwell. So the focus really is on the proposed new entrance. So, and no consideration was taken into account to sort of even adjust the the trim around the door to yeah. take away the importance of it. The existing? Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, having that feature now coming out and be prominent so close to something that looks like a front door, to me, is um, just a little too... They're too close to each other. Kind of and competing against, competing against, against yeah. each other. Yeah, and having never walked in there, yeah. I, it, it's very confusing. If, if I didn't know the school, I'd be like, what is the front door? I mean, I know signage helps, but it, to me, architecturally, it's, 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 it's too crowded. Yeah. Sure. Too crowded. Um, and, and again, keep, I think we need to talk a little bit about the landscape. Yeah, keep going. We'll, we'll, go, we'll address everything. We'll go through one at a time. I'm sorry, yeah. Yep. I, I appreciate the comment, but let's keep, yep, so we don't. And it might just be a coloration. It might be a trim coloration that we can work on. Uh, this is the backside uh, from the courtyard. Uh, the existing playground out there goes right to, um, into the, the courtyard nook there and 
most of that um, courtyard is uh, being converted into an outdoor garden space, which Sean will go into a little greater de detail. And with that, I'll turn it temporarily over to him, and then we can go back and respond to questions. Okay. So the, the treatment at the front is very similar to Hidden uh, in the regard of uh, it having a brick inset um, <coughs> paving with a herringbone pattern and a running bond frame. The, I'm going to try to zoom into this. Could you try to zoom into this okay. here? I might have done something. Oops. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> well, let me talk a little bit about that as um, if it's my mistake. Um, That's fine. That's good. Okay. And this is just, this is just fine. So I'm going to point out just some of the areas here. So in this area here, we are downplaying the entry by incorporating three lower canopy flowering plants, um, magnolia trees um, that will stay evergreen through the winter. And um, so visually, we're trying to mask it somewhat. I think I think that's sort of a partial answer to the question, uh, but I do want to point that out. In addition to that, we are uh, accompanying the front entry with plantings to either side, which are continuous along the colonnade here. <clears throat> Mainly evergreens that will stay green throughout the, the year. <clears throat> What's the height on those evergreens? Uh, that's going along the, the length the length corridor? Yeah. Let me, so what's the mature length or height on those? Let me refresh my memory now. I'm just thinking answer. back to the rendering where it showed that you know, it was a very strong architectural feature going across there. It's like how how much I mean, something was a little lower, I think it would allow the you know, the facade to be a little bit more expressed. Right, right. Um, <clears throat> approximately 30 feet in, in height is, is where those would, would grow to the so, so I don't correct me if I'm wrong, then you're talking like all the those trees across the front of the connector to the music room. Or so, what, uh, so maybe I'm so there, there it's, it's those are those the there. Okay, there are some trees here that we are that we are proposing that will grow to that maturity. The the shrubs that are here will be four foot in height. Gotcha. Approximately. Okay. okay. It will stay okay. somewhat lower. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, my, my misunderstanding. that. So this is a much better view of the space here. So we have the, the parent um, trees to the left of the entry, we have the third off to the side here, lower understory plantings such as these shrubs that will run along the colonnade. I'm going to move on to the courtyard space. And a question on the benches, you're showing the uh, number of new new benches, is that it? I think, uh, if I remember correctly, that was in the same style as what's being used at Hindley. Right, with the wood it's the same the, type. Yeah. It's a metal frame bench with a wood uh, slat. I'm trying to think at Oxridge what they did for their seating outside the entrance there. Yeah, and that was a completely new building. But I don't know, like a formal bench for kids and stuff. Yep, yep. Is it, is it the most appropriate, I guess? With the back. It, yeah, it has a back, but also yeah, has the arms on the side. I want to see a hold that thought, because I think that could apply to all of them. I know mean, it's really hard. I know it's really, I think it's a really good thought that could, that's relevant to all. Yeah. Could you yeah. repeat that thought? I'm sorry, I was... Oh, I, I just, just, again, for, for at the end when we're reviewing notes, it's, I would just put some thought into the style of those benches and the function of those benches when you're dealing with first through fifth graders, kindergartners too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a very formal looking bench and it it's, doesn't seem like something kids can just like jump around on and they kind of jump around on. So, so that was something to think about. Good point. 
Uh, this space, the courtyard, is designed to be jumped around in. We have the similar elements as in Henry. We have the wood platform that could be used for formal teaching or play. Um, rubberized servicing that is playful and a perimeter uh, seat element, uh, concrete seat element that will provide <coughs> social and formal opportunities there. Planting plan is on, on the left to show the intent of how we're keeping massings of shrubs and trees and the like. And I'd be happy to answer more questions about that if there are any. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it back to Eric. So the last of the three projects is Royal. And the Royal does not have any significant architectural um, adjustments. It's mostly the landscape architecture. But this, uh, this view right here shows the, um, the aerial on the left with the existing, and we're proposed here again. We're eliminating the existing library, and in its place we are putting a new addition, two-story addition. Uh, this slide shows it from a different view. That uh, two-story addition is in the middle of the page to the right. In the background is a new art and music addition, which is actually generally on the same footprint as the original um, first grade wing. And you can see uh, in the courtyard there a similar courtyard expression to the other two schools. So another shot from above. Okay, so there are no changes here, right? No major changes. Yeah, okay. So um, mm -hmm. where we're putting additions, uh, we're being contextual in terms of the height, this, this <coughs> courtyard right here is. Uh, it's a two-story courtyard throughout. The addition is two stories. It's uh, brick to match, cast stone generally to match. Uh, one of the new features has, has to do with these uh, large bay windows that are on both sides that, are, that um, focus the classrooms to those courtyards or to those outside spaces. This is the plan from above. Uh, this plan shows the three additions that are proposed. Uh, the learning commons at the bottom, the proposed two-story classroom addition in the middle, and the one-story art and music addition at the top of the page. A um, couple of items that we're doing here that are, are significant. We're creating that new courtyard that's in the middle that's um, encompassed by the classrooms and the learning commons. At the top of the page on the right where it says new lawn, currently that's all asphalt. And so actually on, on this campus we're reducing the amount of impervious surface on campus. And um, we've actually relocated the generator to the back side and, and there's a new electric service that's going on back there as well. Here's a view into that courtyard. Straight ahead is the, where the learning commons is, is on the first floor, and to the right are, is the first grade classrooms on the first floor and the second grade classrooms on the upper floor. Um, uh, the bay windows is a, a metal panel with uh, a curtain wall system, and then um, again the brick and the cast stone are to match the existing building. Here you can see the art and music wing on the back, and it's, those special subject classrooms are really designed as one-story spaces. We want to take advantage of the height, similar to Himley. Uh, the, the ceilings here extend upward and outward uh, so that we can get greater height in those classrooms, better light. Uh, the art room faces north, which is terrific uh, natural light for those art rooms, and they look out into the, the yard. I gotta wrap you up here. Unless you got changes to talk about, we've read, we've seen all this. So, okay. So I'm not Lawrence, sorry, Eric. I'm sorry. Actually, I do have a question on the. Uh, now that it's on there, it's perfect. The courtyard, the back area, which shows the children sitting on a ledge. Mm -hmm. Is this raised platform cut wood? By about 15 inches. Yes. So how do they get up 
to the 15 inches. Is there an area where there are steps or a ramp? Yeah. How about they, if there are handicapped children, how do they get up there? On all three, there's a ramp. Oh, excellent. Okay. So we got stairs on one side, but on the other side in all three schools, there is a slope to walk okay. without handrails. So right. it's not, it's not easy to see on that run, but it's, that's great that you guys thought about it. That's right. And on the other side, it's a true bench with 15 inches on both sides. On this, the, on the, the other here. dip there. The, the oh, bottom. yes, that's right. right. So I'll be brief. That's right. I'll be brief. This is similar in concept to the other two. The benefit here is that we have more space, so we've dedicated that to open lawn for recreation, which is going to give us a more flexibility. In addition, we have a pairing of outdoor areas that we've incorporated tables with built in seats to give um, the school that ability to use that during the day. Okay. Um, all right, guys, who wants to start us off? Sean, I mean, sorry, Sean. Um, Dave, you had some great comments. I didn't want to cut you off. I thought they would just lead to a larger conversation. Okay. Um, do you want to go back in or someone else? Um, well, I, I think I said what I needed to say regarding the roof material on homes. Uh, and then I, I think. Let's go back. Let's, so let's talk about the roof material on homes. Let's talk about homes and entrance because I think there's a couple that. that yeah. Elicit a lot of stuff. Yeah. So, so can we, is it possible? Do you want to pull that up? Yeah, there. Thank you. So, I mean, I appreciate your second look at creating an entrance um, at the school and making it prominent. Um, I do think there's some additional study that would warrant creating more importance of that entryway and looking at the existing facade next to it. I, I personally don't believe that the planting screening is actually going to take away that pediment and, and trim around that door. You still have a path because it's an egress stair, so you're going to have people coming out, so it's still going to be there. Um, I, you know, it, it, if there's a way to revisit that elevation so that that main entry space pops more, and there isn't conflict, I'd be worth, a little, worth the exercise. Um, yeah, I don't know why you'd even want, I think that, that tells a history, that entrance and the way that the, belt, the building developed over time. I don't know why you'd want to, the idea that you guys chose the word to mask it with landscaping, I was pretty troubled with that, hearing that. I mean, you want to celebrate all the stages of a building. You actually talked about that, Eric, and like that part of your design, your accomplishment is celebrating like, right, how it's come together, and I feel like this is kind of trying to hide something. Um, I, I, I love that you I, I love that you guys approached it and did a new entrance and tried to integrate the two. I don't know if it's there yet. What I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not, what part of it? <coughs> it sounds like you have a concern with that door right there, yep. but you're saying yes. the entrance the, itself isn't there, or are you saying that no, the, you're just the, concerned the, the, the that there's the two? The whole assembly <coughs> isn't there yet because you still have that pediment. Exist, you know, old. So, so if you don't have yeah, that, look, I mean, doesn't that look like it's an entrance to you without that conflict? Okay. There? So, right. so it's really more about this door than it is about the new planned architecture. I'm, I'm just trying to, to narrow it down to what you're seeing that's an issue. I like the new entrance, but I like you. You're providing a new entrance, but I don't think like that is the op That's the option. That's the space and the way to have done it. I also don't think masking or taking away what's there, like somehow taking away that old door, and any sort of like, whether it's landscaping or if you went and, and re-attacked that building and, and changed the structure, I think that is the approach to, I don't yeah, think changing the, the old is, to highlight a new you, way to go. Yeah, what can you do to dump it though? Like if by removal, and then you've run into a situation of... Yeah. Well, I mean, is it a glass all, pavilion where you enter and then turn? So it's Enter online design. with the That's old the door and then turn right to get to the new. Every, it's an atrium when you first come in. I mean, you, you've introduced some architectural elements on the additions that are certainly more contemporary. You could do that here too. You could. I mean, your your extension is sort of a transition, but you could make this an entrance that clearly is new, um, and then the pediment wouldn't be su such conflict, right? Because it would be a different architectural expression. I, I don't want to be the designer. I'm just saying that right now it isn't singing 
in that it says this is the entryway. Um, I also feel like the, the angle is throwing me off, and it's almost bringing the two entrances closer together in a way. Um, like I, I see how you're trying to angle it towards the curb in the driveway, but um, I know the old entrance that you had was just in line with well, um, the existing entrance is, is sort of up, it's tucked into the corner right here. So it, it has no presence to the street. And right. so our, our right, big right. move here to, to rotate this was to, to receive people that are being dropped off. That was important to us. It could have been bumped out a little bit and, and widened to, to maybe um, be similar to the music area. Not, not that wide, but um, have those two kind of work together at being the new addition. This is the entrance. Um, without seeing it, I can't say whether that solves anything with the entrance to the stairway, but I don't know, I'm just wanted to put that out there. The, 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 the angle throws me off a little bit, and you're also creating this little kind of awkward corner that I think you're just going to put landscaping in. I mean, like from someone who's been there, David, is you are losing some area where I don't know whether mm -hmm. kids might gather. Like, are you creating kind of like a? Uh, it's it's point more just it? it's it's movement. It's the circulation <coughs> primarily. Um, I typically don't do pickup there, but I have, you know, dropping the kids off in the morning on occasion. Uh, it's it's like you, you drive up. You know, there there's quite a bit of vehicular movement there too, and that is like the drop off area where you drive up. Kids get out of the car and. Going to that, that entrance. You are losing kind of square footage. Yeah, in terms of exterior. whether it backs them up into the parking lot, I, I don't think that would be that that would be a real conflict at that point. And I don't think there's, at least in my experience, so much volume of kids yeah. that it would, would be a problem. Uh, but it does come out further for sure. Um, uh, yeah, I think it's just how it how that inside corner is resolved with mm -hmm. expressing that entrance effectively as a, again, it, after like, uh, I don't think I was ever personally confused about where to drop the kids off. There's a, <laughs> there's a real functional reason yeah. for why we pulled it out the way that we did. Mm -hmm. Currently, if you go there, that, that vestibule is Literally, in it, there's a, um, a security vestibule in yeah. the lobby. Space. It is nice that it actually is being pulled out. So it's, it it's, is, it's pulled yeah. out, and it's pulled out even farther, mm -hmm. so that when you're coming across here, you're not interrupted by the vestibule. You're not sort of snaking around it. So that provides the security that we need for the building. So it has a secure vestibule. Uh, reception welcome center desk right off of that so that they can see people that are coming into the building and, it, and then kids that are going back and forth between the music classrooms and the rest of the building have a free and clear pathway to it get just back needs to, to be classrooms. reworked uh, that's that's a fine question i just don't, i don't i'm not quite understanding other than other than our um the comments about the doorway here yeah i understand this doorway comment I'm not quite understanding the comments related to the entrance. I, I think we're hesitant. It, it, no one wants to design anything for you, right? Okay. Take away. So I think it's, there's a balance of trying to give feedback without telling you what to do. Um, you said it well before. Yeah. It's not singing. Yeah, it's not singing. Yeah, I, it's, uh, it's a little subjective, right? But um, it, I personally don't have an issue of it coming out and turning an angle. I actually think that's the way to resolve that condition and plan. I think it's the <coughs> architectural expression of that entry space that conflicts with the adjacent architecture. And the roof line of it. Mm -hmm. yeah, just, yeah, I, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I think that yeah. that's the if part If it was that, like this jewel box. Jewel was, box, right? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, you've got, you're, you're expressing different architecture and the additions in the back. Perhaps that, there's an opportunity to do that here, too. Okay, um, which is where we came from actually, because we came from a very modern um, addition before. 
that okay. came out and turned? Yeah, the, this this whole addition here was um, yeah, very was different in, in but, architectural but, expression. But the, but the entrance wasn't. This was actually. Um, it turned like this and was it angled. Up the old one. Uh, was, no, the old that's one. That's what I'm talking about. The old one did not have um, the entrance vestibule yes. that was added. Right. Th that's I'm talking about the entry. Let's see. The tenement, yeah, just, so the tenement just doesn't work right. There. Imagine that, yeah. Okay, so I, it, so, it sounds like the, the concern is this piece right here. Yeah, yeah, that. Thank you. Appreciate it. Except we do appreciate that you focus on because that was one of our main feedbacks, is, was bringing out the entrances, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I think, I don't want to get lost in, this, in the feedback we're giving here. That, like, I think that was a great thing that you guys took this and and address that. I feel like the, I think that this, the sediment in general, it needs to be, the architectural language needs to be rethought in that section. Pulling it out seems to have worked well. <coughs> Putting an angle maybe works well too. Um, does that give you enough? Yeah. Maybe it doesn't or necessarily or have the same roof material or, or roof pitch or, you know, yeah. I think, you know, is that where that flat, you know, does that become the real modern element? I think that. Yeah, you know, I'm looking that, at the that, original submission on Just that. the entry piece. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. All okay. Do you guys want to stay on entrances and talk about um, change, lack of change to Royal, or any change? Yeah, I, I have a comment about Henley. I mean, I, I wasn't here for the last meeting, but I did see your submission. Um, and I know you're... Um, reintroducing the old Henley entrance, and I know it's a bus drop-off. Um, I do feel that just treating the existing front entry with landscape, to me, it's the, the old classical entry feels more important as an entry place, architecturally addressed, rather than the main entry where most of the with adult the traffic will be coming through. I, I feel like you're missing an opportunity here to either address both of them architecturally so that they speak as entrances that are um, at, have equal value, but right now the front door doesn't feel the way you've designed it as, as an important entry space, but the bus drop-off entry for the kids is. I don't know if you've had conversations with the building committee about this and ha has this come up? Uh, it's not part of our charge to address that, I guess I'd say, that uh, there's a limited budget, there's a, there was a finite scope of work, and in this case, the um, existing original, en the existing entrance, uh, the committee was fine in terms of upgrading it, in terms of landscape and hardscape, mm -hmm. but in terms of creating new canopies or other aspects in front of that, that they weren't um, interested in entertaining at this time. So that was our primary feedback for that was what we made feedback for all these the schools, right? In our last meeting. And, and that, our, that's and a, that's a and, and I understand that. And our okay. charge really wasn't okay. to address those entrances. Our charge was to provide the facilities necessary for their programs. Their programs were really critical, and to provide the uh, last time we went through so the, all, the, the reasons for why we're doing the projects that we were doing. Mm -hmm. For right sizing classrooms and providing enough classrooms, etc. Yeah, I think and programmatically you've achieved yep. you know, what, what you've been the goals. You know, charged with. Um, uh, personally, I think removing the, the library from that entry, even though it does make it more of a dominant entry for buses, it just architecturally is a little, you know, the, the massing, it, it just it brings it back to yeah, a nice. school building rather yeah, than masking this thing off. It's good. So, so I guess so to, to your me, point. To me, yeah. again, yeah. What, what's the front door? Yeah. Yeah. What's the front door? And I, I appreciate that the students that are bused to school will be using that as the yeah. front the door. The users know, know where to go. Right. Yeah. We didn't design this. I know you didn't. <laughs> right. This is what we're given. I know. This is right. what we're working with. And uh, yeah, obviously, in the 1970s when the architects put that library addition in front of the main entrance, they also said that's no longer the front door. <clears throat> and so the front door shifted over to the north side of the building. And, uh, I, I, in, in a project 
five or six years ago, they moved the main office and all the other functions to this part of the building as well to strengthen that this is where the front door is uh, from <coughs> public safety point of view as well as from a, just sort of a physical um, location or program point of view. So this is an opportunity to further strengthen that and double down then, triple down on the, on the, on the front door. I know we're, you guys are, something like you guys are just conduits here, right? You're doing your, you answered what you guys are supposed to do with the building committee. It's a shame that Jill and Chris couldn't be here. Um, Oh, they'll listen, I'm sure. Right. They will listen. I think those, those comments are going to say, I think we came away with those comments the first time and they're still here. I think it's appreciated that you guys made an effort. Uh, I mean, that's the word. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm with you to... Um, I, it's, so, so I, I, I stand firm that this, to me, does not feel like the front entry. I know that your charge is to address the other issues, but... Uh, I think there's an opportunity to go back to the building committee with our comments to say perhaps there's some investment in architecture adjusting it. I am not suggesting tearing down stuff and <laughs> taking what you're doing at the bus entry here, but to just put some additional landscaping here doesn't make it more important than the bus drop off. It was sure. Yeah, I think it's so, great because sure. what so you've can. done is fantastic. What you've done to the other entrance, to the way you've, you've brought that back, I think is wonderful. It would be awesome to see your design, your visions, somehow the building, the building taking that and bringing that and putting that in some way our touch into, into the main the entrance. entrance. Right. Yeah. And not or not adding a second story, not changing, like, you know, but I, I don't know. I, I would be. I think there's a moment in the herringbone trick inlay that maybe it's an H for Henley or it's the blue wave. Like a herringbone entryway isn't a kid's, like make them kind of <coughs> take ownership of Darien and the school system they're in. I think it's what, I, what I'm hearing is that's not going far enough. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it's okay. a great start. <coughs> but I, I will say, I mean, this speaks to uh, the age of the students that are going to the school more so than the original Henry well, that's true too. Uh, Henley entrance. Right. The, the original Hen Henley entrance, which we are restoring as the bus drop-off pickup, is pretty monumental yeah. and sure, it's sure much is. more looking like a uh, high school, school size <laughs> entrance than this. This is a very um, familiar type of architecture that for the younger students is probably more comfortable than any other. Other and I think we have to look at that too. So, I agree. So, I that's a great so point. That, exactly. And so perhaps it's not as monumental on the bus drop off. Well, maybe uh, <laughs> we don't put that plaza. Maybe what you're saying is maybe you scale down the, the plaza in front or you don't have the plaza in front and you do more with landscaping or something to reduce its presence. Sure. You still come in and out that way because that's where the buses drop sure. off and pick up. Right. But you're not making a strong statement there because this is your front door. Yeah. That, and the, uh, the experience of that, <coughs> this is the experience of this. This is the primary entry. I'm, I'm preaching to the choir. Yeah. <laughs> well, the other thing to go back to your experiences and kind of piggyback what Dave said earlier about um, the benches, like. This is actually the school I go to. If you can tell, maybe I, 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 I have no more about it. Parents and kids, this is where you hang out. The bus entrance, parents aren't allowed over there. No one's even allowed there. It's just kids go in, they go out, right? So the full experience for anyone going in the school is here. And so if we're going to do stuff like adding benches, I, you know, doing all that work, that should be thrown here at this part. And that bus stop, like. Hmm. The removal like so from a resource, so, right? From resource, put those yeah. here. Remove the library. That makes sense. Bring back, you know. I love the idea how you guys are bringing back the original buildings and not eliminating it, but telling a story with how the like how it's developed over time. And so I think you're doing a great job here. And then yeah. we're, trying, we're trying to respect history while at the same time moving this forward. Into yeah, you've done a very nice job. It's great. I kind of find it interesting that the renderings. I was just going through the. Image. Oh, there is the one image of that. Yeah, the bus en entrance. Yeah, it is. It's it's imposing. It's imp It is like a high school entrance. Yeah. Well, you don't see it today because it's completely yeah. blocked or mostly blocked by the seventies library. But you know, you could. I mean, it's almost modern in some ways. Uh, that articulation of those. Um, 
pilasters, right? And so if you took away that plaza that's in front of it, that is creates a very formal experience, and you made it simpler and more kid-friendly and looser, all of a sudden that imposing architecture loses its strength and massiveness. That, that I understand, and that's something that we can work with. <coughs> Thank you. Um, what about, you guys are talking about royal entrance at all? I'm just going to keep the on entrance, entrance yeah, The entrance to royal wasn't really discussed. Well, nothing was done to it. Yeah. But there you go. And so it stays. Um, and what was your thought process there? I mean, mm -hmm. you knew that was one of our comments, and so you took it back to the building mm -hmm. committee. Did you guys mm -hmm. explore it at all, or were you told not to explore it? Um, again, I think our charge was to that we had X amount of money to spend. Okay. And um, you know, based on the, the cost estimating that had been done, that we were where we needed to be and we couldn't go beyond that. Um, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a fairly tight <coughs> elevation and area to yeah. work with on that side. We don't have a, a photograph of that as part of this presentation. Yeah. We had it last time. We're looking at the we area that you can see. And uh, you have a, a bus drop off and then you have a fairly sizable um, grade change to get up to the front door. And so there, there's a set of steps and there's a ramp and a, a fairly not narrow landscape zone in there to, to work off of. And then they have a, a similar canopy to the canopy that was seen at home. So it's a, a, a blue wave canopy. So uh, that's, then, yeah, that's just other than making a more modern canopy, um, which you know we had discussed is what if we get rid of the blue canopy and, yeah. and do something that's a little bit more contemporary yeah. and a stronger statement. Yeah. And um, does Sean look at some of the landscape beds and there's something here and there that you can do with the landscape beds, yeah. perhaps? Yeah. But it, again, it's a fairly tight area yeah. to work with. There's the not a whole lot that we can do other than... But even, even changing out the canopy and giving it a, a cleaner look. I'll bring, I'll bring that back to the... It's like, um, you know, like tweeting your eyebrows. I'll bring it back to the building committee. <laughs> You want to talk about the benches? Yeah. So I'm looking at, yeah, I, I just, I, I somewhat disagree with the choice on the bench. I, just in a nutshell, it's, I, I think. What page are you on? Um, well, I was going to, there was actually the landscape. Um, There's an image of it in the Henley slides. That's already yeah. So I, I, again, I think that that's a good comment. I think there's um, lots of different options with benches. They don't necessarily need to have backs. There's some wonderful benches out there that are uh, landscape benches that we can yeah, more share with you. Like slab like, and you know, yeah. just something they can hang out and get to really sit it's on and like yeah. cross their legs on and, and really engage with each other. I think those are little gathering spots, and yeah, just such a formal bench just wants you to. It's a nice comment, thank you. Yeah. Cool. Speaking of gathering spots, mm -hmm. landscape, I was hoping that there'd be more like. LA's or pops. There's summer camps that go on in these schools, mm -hmm. and I've picked my kids up very sweaty. And they would have loved a bit of shade. And if it's a formal, you know, an LA between two fields or an LA in front of where they can go, I don't know, Bryant Park style seating, pull some chairs up, I think it would be really interesting to see what happens there. Um, you mean like loose chairs? Yeah. I don't know. Mm. Um, shooting for the stars. Loose um, chairs? I'm just no. throwing it out there. Um, <clears throat> there's no uh, removals on your plans? Mm -hmm. uh, th they are part of the civil package that was submitted. So could you. you put those in red? The removals? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if they're red on the plans. I'd have to break them <clears> out. <throat> it's, so. it's hard to understand what you're taking out versus what you're putting in. Okay. On all three. I can take a look at that. So um, at Henley, you're putting in 24 trees at homes. You're putting in 40. And at Royal, and you're putting 15. So it's hard for us to deduce how many you're taking out versus how many you're putting in. Mm -hmm. And it would be nice, again, I asked during the slide presentation, I was seeing slides here 
asking if they represented your landscape plan. Because there are vast amounts of brick wall that are just like to grass and then brick. So much opportunity for some trees, some shade, more benches. So it would be nice if the two slides. I think we just need to match those up. I think we made some um, planting moves that weren't captured. Um, as far as, I, I think we, I don't know if we have the quantity, Sandy. I know we have done takeoffs of, of remove versus new. We can pull those together rather quickly. Um, I, I think your interest is really to put in, putting trees in where they're usable for the students. Yeah. And they can take advantage of them. The, the ones that well, are on the plans. perimeter, it aren't, you know, they're, they're part of the perimeter sort of design scape. Right. But the ones that are in or adjacent to the building. So it's a campus. I want, to, I want it to feel like a campus. This so, is Darien, and it should, it, the landscape so, should feel like a campus. So I would, I would say that at Hingley, I, I think you made a, a comment at the beginning that those trees weren't on the, the renderings. So on the back side where the, yeah. in Hingley, the, the addition, there's four or five trees that are out there to provide some shade for kids that are out in that area. At, um, at Royal, and we said that we we're taking away this whole asphalt area on right. the, the north end, and we're, we're putting several trees in that area as well. But rather than just more. like plop a tree here or plop a tree here, it seems kind of random. I would like to see more, again, even these are like first and first to fifth graders, have masses, have, yeah. I'll say it again, an LA of trees or a copse of trees. Something that they can I think there was intent. fall in. I think there was intent to the plant to design how we've laid out the trees. For instance, if you look at Royal, where we've removed a lot of bituminous painting and put in trees, the arrangement is naturalistic. It's it's randomized to fit in with the setting. I personally don't think an alley. It was it was an example. Is an example. That's true. It's a good example of a strong planted concept, and I think that's good. Um, I'm just responding that there's design intent, but not flopping trees. So <coughs> let's look at that. I like that, Leslie. I like the idea of creating moments ac across these, these fields of spaces, mm -hmm. right? Breaking up the shade. Yeah, providing shade. Yeah, snack, shade. Shade. talks. Yeah. But more than providing shade, but creating a moment for children, mm -hmm. because children are drawn to these pockets of. Pocket parks within the campus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't have to be um, overly complicated and um, expensive or detailed. Six to eight trees. I like that idea. What else, guys? I, I, I looked at the, uh, the brick, the, the sample boards, and I, I don't have any exception to the choice on the bricks. So it seems like they, they were well paired with the existing. Um, there was a cult, um, manufactured stone for the copings and, and whatnot. <coughs> yes, yeah, yeah. you have that? Yeah. Yes, that's all. Yeah, it was the, I think uh, one question I would have is that the louvers. Uh, what was the color choice on the louvers for masking like, the equipment and whatnot? It's, it's a gray. That is that is the actual color choice on that? Yeah, yeah there's a sample of the louver right. and the... Um, <coughs> it's an anodized silver, I believe. Okay. Just light, it goes away. Okay. It matches the rest of the metal. You don't want it too light and you don't want it too dark. Gotcha. Yeah, if you do it white, it really pops out or and it's dirty over stuff. time. Yeah. And if you do it too dark, it looks ominous up there. So. I would just like to go on record. I just pulled up the bench. I think that could be improved upon. I just finally got this pulled up. Mm -hmm. I don't think that was appropriate for elementary <coughs> kids. Nice. So this is every building. Is this cast stone for every building is matching this? They're all the same, the same color. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it, no. It's uh, each building is to match its own cast stone color. So some of them are whiter and some of them are more beige. Which is these two? They've all broken down to these two, or they're looking more outside of this? Uh, pretty, pretty much. Pretty much these two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, three different bricks. Mm -hmm.
I try to tend to not to like to go um, lighter. I'd rather go a little bit darker. No, that's cool. Because uh, the existing, even if it was lighter at one point, it's a little bit dirty now. Yeah. Would it be uh, for the existing brick? Is there any like intent of cleaning the existing facades to? Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Anything else, guys? So I think our feedback. I think we're doubling down. On kind of the same takeaway we had last time. I think really appreciate what you guys did and the, the updates you made and the considerations you made. And I also think you guys are a difficult spot. I know it's. I know it's um, feedback by committee by committee by committee you're working with. Um, so focusing solely on the architecture, which is. I, a little bit beyond the scope that you've been given, I feel like the board's two takeaway here is we would not be doing our job if we did not say we are missing opportunity by bringing it, bringing out these old entrances as new and more prominent, more so than kind of what's been done. I, I think the Holmes one was best addressed, but maybe these just small architectural adjustments, right? You're clear on that. Um, so yeah. Yes. It's not favorable, we're not done here. Um, this is new territory for me, so I'm not really sure. I, I know you guys need, want to move forward, want to work ahead. I don't know where you are in the stage of things. Um, I don't want to be, we don't want to be like a, a, an obstacle for you, but we'll we have be, to see. We'll some. be completing construction drawings um, in February. In February, okay. So how do you want to do this with and your it building goes, committee? It goes up to the state in February. Okay. For a final. When in February? End? Towards the end. I'm not sure if it, at this point maybe it, offline next step is to even speak with you know Jill or Chris um, to really you know let them know our, how strong we feel about these takeaways. Would that be a helpful next step here in our letters addressing them? Uh, or feel free. Like giving our comments to you that these areas need to be revisited. Again, our, our charge wasn't for those entrances, so um, if you feel strongly about that, I guess as a committee you should. Just as a board, you should mention it to them. Well, we did our last one, but I think, I think we got closer, but we're not there. So I don't know, but leaving it with you guys might not just be enough. Maybe it needs to be, if we're telling you to go back, rework these, will you come well, back in January with I this, mean, or do you have a... I mean, obviously, we, we rework the Homes project yep. significantly. It sounds like there's still some um, areas there you'd like us to look at. I think I understand. Um, and in Hindley, we did make adjustments based on what we heard again, is we heard maybe it's just some landscape uh, type of features. That's what we heard last time. Okay. And what we're hearing now is that you'd like us to even potentially explore going a little bit beyond that. Yes. Um, Not potentially, definitely. The two well, are competing a bit. The, the entrances are competing, the bus and this, right? Well, what, what I heard is that maybe um, the solution is actually to downplay the bus one, as opposed to trying to upplay um, the entrance, but. Um, well, no. I mean, if you downplay the bus drop off, and you take that, the money you're spending there, and the upgrades you're making there, to this location, to the existing main entry, and make that more important, it'll it'll read like it's the front door. Again, we we have um, Similar to road, there's limited space here because of the bus drop off. So, I mean, if you're thinking that maybe we're putting a canopy here or something to that effect, uh, and if you're thinking that we're modifying this elevation and, and somehow changing that, I, I would I think that the school district's going to really push back on that. But if Is you it the budget, Do you it's just that it's not, not their interest. Though. But we're saying the budget's being shifted. We're saying shift the budget, so take yeah. it away from one side and I mean, apply it here. <coughs> I mean, you've got, at least in this image that I'm looking at that's up on the screen, looks like there's enough depth there to create a, an, an arrival plaza that has some level of importance with landscaping that goes along with it and seating that works for children and adults. I mean, I, Again, it seems like if the members of the committee, you know, are here, it would have been, yeah, it would have been helpful. helpful. Okay. I, 
I understand where you're going, so thank you. Okay. Okay. So I will uh, for the schedule uh, in order to stay on track. We would need ARB sign off in January, mid January. Okay. Yeah. I, I got to figure out how that would go. Like, I've been seeing, seeing this again. So if it's like with a condition, uh, condition of just, I mean, since we, I think we agree that the, the majority of the school, like the classroom, the, the library, the music, those are all successful. Right. It's really just these elements. Right, these two elements. There's a way to move forward in that. Fashion. That's true. That's a great idea. Yeah. I mean, as a board, you guys saw the same thing. You guys convinced me that you guys saw the same thing again, and they're coming back and saying, "We're not. We have approached this. The like, building committee is not doing this. This is what it is." Can we give them a favorable report, or just say no? You guys can take an unfavorable report, and the building committee did. Like, how would you guys feel about that? Let's see what it looks like. Let's see what they come back with. Because yeah. I don't know if I can say, "Yeah, I'm good. I want to go on record that I favor that. I'm going to support that." Yeah. I don't know. I would also recommend that we have a conversation with the building committee. Okay. I mean, maybe that's. Outside of our meeting, but I, I think it's important for them to, to, to hear our concerns yeah. okay. and hear what that's what that's Yeah, I mean, if they come back and say, <laughs> "Sorry," okay, so then that's. Yeah. So I want to talk this out on back while we're here, so we kind of so you guys had an idea. So you guys don't come back and waste your time. You're like, "Come on, guys, we've made another attempt here. We don't we what we can do." Um, all right. I, I'm, I will send Jill and Chris an email. We'll, too. we'll start the conversation. <laughs> See this guys. We really, you guys did a very nice Thank job. We really appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Rico. All right, guys. All right, all right guys. Uh, Rico's Pizza is up next. By the way, my daughter's favorite pizza. Oh, <laughs> <my God. laughs> it, 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 it's my kid's favorite. No, it's nice. Thank you. Is it Stanford? There's one in the morning, too. We go there all the time. Really? There is a camp. I'm so glad that was coming to the school. I didn't know about you. Stanford. If you want to know, there's a Gentlemen, I don't know if you heard how the last meeting started. Please go up to the podium, introduce yourselves, what your title is, your business, how you relate to the project. And we are familiar with. What this is, but give us a very brief overview, and then we can just go into the details. Because we've done our homework, we know what we're looking at here. Uh, in general, uh, one more George. time. My name's Enrico Peronio. Okay. I'm with Rico's Pizza, um, and we're here for a sacrament. You're the owner. I'm one of the owners. Yeah. And this is Luigi Cardillo Jr. I'm the another one of the owners. You guys wouldn't be Italian by chance, would you? No, American, <laughs> born and raised in the U.S. of A. Uh -huh. I love the you your last name. Cardillo, C A R D I L O. C A R D I L O. L L O. L O. Thank you. Okay. So, we're here to put up a couple signs, hopefully. Um, <coughs> where Louis' restaurant was, which is this here. Yeah. And the first sign we want to put up is a Rico's over the front door. And with the other part of our logo, Fig Crust Pizza. On either side. Did you bring uh, proof of uh, the proof that that's your name, your full name, that Crust Pizza is in your actual LLC registered name? Um, your legal name. Well, our legal name are like Selig Street Pizza LLC, Hope Street Pizza LLC. They're not, they don't have Rico's Thin Crust Pizza. The, the, the DBAs are Thin Crust Pizza, Rico's Thin Crust Pizza. Rico's is a registered trademark in the, in the uh, U.S. Trademark Association. But Thin Crust Pizza is not. Thin Crust Pizza was uh, is a little too broad, but we can incorporate that to our logo. Um, so the Rico's is a registered trademark, and per our, our attorney, the Thin Crust Pizza can be used anywhere with our trademark. That's part of the name. Yes, it is part of the name and infused. Look, I think in the file that we sent, 
all of our restaurants have the Rico Stinkos pizza on. I think you guys should have that in your folder. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Because so they're taking over Luigi's. Oh, you know, so I have these. I put on. Oh, yeah, the, thank uh, you. That's cool. Put up the, uh, the front and back existing for yeah. you. Yeah. Front, yeah. back, yeah. and then the front and back with your proposal. Front and back. Can you give me existing front again for a second? Existing front. Please. Oop. Oop. Louis. That's curved, isn't it? That yes. Is. yes. So Louis had what on the left and what on the right? Louis has. Italian restaurant and bar on both sides. Huh. Bit of a similar mm -hmm. concept because it's curved and it kind of addresses both sides mm -hmm. of the street. So on the front you're proposing a... Just the Rico's in the middle, similar to Louis, with uh, thin crust pizza on each side. I think we end up doing it on both sides because it was out of balance. Mm -hmm. We just didn't want it look weird. And it is, mm -hmm. and it is sort of uh, there. Yeah. 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 We only see refills if you're coming from the trees. Mm -hmm. So I'm struggling with this being red Me too. and or also lit. Yes. Yes. It just doesn't seem to fit um, mm -hmm. our downtown district. Sorry? Is it illuminated? The letters These are, are illuminated. They're backlit letters. So it's a red finish on top of red, um, what is it, like a painted or is it a red apply? No, no, they're, uh, it's red metal. Red metal, okay. Our, our most of our letters are channel letters. Okay. Which are clear, it's a red clear plastic in the front that the light shines through. But because you hear in, you don't approve those, you want backlit letters. Mm -hmm. These will be backlit, so the light will shine back at that black and that will just glow. The red will not, will not uh, oh, so the, up. Just the edges. Just the edges, yellow. correct. Mm -hmm. And what's the size of those letters? Just those letters are... 18 inches. 52 inches long and 18 tall. 18, correct. Yeah, those are... 18 inches. But is that to scale, space. then? Is that, that yes. sign? Yes. Oh, it's to scale to the building, the best they can do with the photo. Appreciate that. Uh, that's 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 so while you, while you are allowed to do 18 inches here, we had the same debate with Louis. It just 18 inches is overpowering for the architectural, uh, you know, what is it, sign, sign, uh, what's it called? Oh, I think the front is 24 inches. The whole front. That right whole front part. Yeah, the, the sign man, the sign fascia. The Ricos with it not sitting on it, with it going over it. Yeah, I think Doesn't it has to right. be within the within that box. Yeah, that's not a problem. We could we could shrink it down. Yeah, I think it will feel better. So like down to like yeah. yeah, like fourteen or well, whatever fits in the um, in that band. Center. Yeah. Okay. I think Louis were like fourteen inches. Yeah, so Louis. Were they? Okay. Yeah. Maybe a little bit bigger. But that whole, size. This whole, this yeah, that whole size. section is Oops, like, about that. this whole yeah, section is 20, I think 20 something inches. <coughs> this down here, I think is 18. Yeah. So it looks like there's a couple inches on each side, up top and bottom. I think you'd want a couple, like an inch on each side so it doesn't look crowded. 14. 14. I mean, if it, if it was the Louis height, then it would be fine. Yeah, I agree. Okay. And the side of the letter are metal as well, that black on yours, the outline, is a black metal outline? Yes. Okay. It's all metal? It's all metal. Okay. And then thin crust pizza, and there's... The, I'm sorry, go ahead. The Rico's is metal. The black ones, the small ones, the thin crust pizza, are made <laughs> out of just a PVC, you know, material that's a plastic okay. material. Just a plastic. Yeah, and they just be small little leathers, and they would be on like little pegs that would be little standoffs about a half inch off of off oh, the face. Okay. So they would be pinned mounted. Okay. No, but no light on the thin crust, so you just yeah. mount it. Yeah. Okay. And then that's the front, and then the bay. And this is the back. Do we have an existing back? Uh, we do, but I don't know why this picture doesn't want to. Let's do an existing back. 
Nope. This is the existing back. This is the existing back, right? Yep. So, so you would eliminate that light? That's how it kind yes. Of, actually, yes. probably not doing much over a flat can. So, Enrico, I'm struggling with one thing on it. The back, so that's not an entrance there. It's no. putting a no. sign over it. I know why you're putting a sign over it, so people know that's your building. That makes sense. But it, it will make everyone walk to that entrance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I don't like the arrow no, with an entrance there. I thought it was there. an entrance, so it's yeah. not an no, entrance. I feel like just you're gonna have to do one of the computer issues. Yeah, they're, they're, it's competition. I don't have a solution, but uh, it's just the blade sign. Just the blade sign. Yeah, I mean, everybody knows that building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Darian, and they know that those back doors are the back entrance. Yeah. I'm gonna cheat. Or you could do even on the door. You could do Rico's and with a sign like a, a static cling on the door. It's like you entrance around corner or something. Rico's around. You know, or I cheated. Put a small Rico's logo on the door so people know it's you as well, and then like a what, the, sign on, the on the actual door, like not like a sign, but actual like cling on the door. That's on, more, on that back door. On that back door, yeah. so people know that's it, and then you go around the corner. So you're saying put the sign where the Louis sign was? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. We're talking about eliminating that whole. But top, if he, but if top right. Louis did. Right. So what did Louis? Yeah, Louis was here. Out of there. Yeah, Louis wasn't good either, though. I like your idea of your blade sign is smarter. I wasn't crazy about that big sign, so I kind of slimmed it down, and I went with kind of matching the front. That's nice. Well, that's which, nice. which would be easy to move over there also, mm -hmm. if you know, that's where we'd want it. Yeah. So it's individual letters instead of it being on that. Well, it'll be like the front side. Yeah, I, I like that better. You know, it's and I, I was looking at it, looking yeah. at it, like the black around yeah, it just, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. But the problem is, I like it better, but the problem is you still have, your, people are going to come to that door. Are you going to make that the main no, he's door? Saying putting it no, where Louis I mean, if I have to move to Louis, where Louis is, we will. I like it here because you can see it from Let's everywhere. You can't see it from anywhere. Thank you. Um, oh, yeah. What does that do? Where does that back door go? Into the dining room? Well, it goes into that back dining room, yeah. Right. Okay. And when you go through the double doors, there's another set of double doors where there's going to be, a, you know, um, a hostess. Yes. And a waiting room. Yes. A vestibule, if you would. And that's where, you know, um, you can come in, you can pick up your pizzas yeah. if you don't right. have to take them out. Could you eliminate that door? Put a window? Or? No, you zone me a tenant. I don't know what you're doing. I wish I did. They want way too much money. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is, the, is the yoga sign not on that wall anymore? No, it is. That's, um, that's our picture without the signs. I don't know. So, yeah. That sign was never doing favors for Louis over there. Like I never noticed it. Like I, that was. I'm with you. It's a so silly location. <clears throat> um, I never noticed that sign. Okay. Because, because because blade, blade, I think the, the blade, blade sign. Yeah. I think the blade helps. sign is perfect. I do too. I think the blade sign. Yeah, I think the blade sign is better. So no sign over the door. No sign over the door. Yeah. I don't think you need it. This one yeah, I the blade and sign I don't think you need a, an arrow. What if you guys came with a yeah a different shape of the plate? Yeah, you could even yeah you don't need the arrow. Well, the arrow could go down. I don't think you. I don't think I think you just need the sign exactly. Yeah. Okay. That's not enough. Well, I definitely like to try to put something up. I mean, if I have to go where the Louis sign is. You know, so that's been there for years, and I think the social had a sign there also. I'm not sure about the social, but. So you're, you'd rather put that wall sign up than the blade sign? Well, I think I can put both, right? Mm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. That's what the code said. Never? Yes. He, he, this is a street front, so he has, he has another wall primary sign. Uh, primary wall sign. Okay. I think it's one or the other, just for aesthetics. So he's allowed 20, 32 square feet in, in wall Which sign and prefer? 7 square feet in blade sign. Okay. As usual. The wall sign or the blade sign? <laughs> I would prefer both. It's too much. Like it, there's one here and then there's one there. It, <clears throat> well, I think if you wanted to put one, it over the entrance door. Which entrance door? Around the corner. Then yeah, have you, have you, well, that's fine. Then <laughs> if you go to the building and you stand there, you can see that back sign in about eight or ten foot run, and then the whole rest of the back doesn't see that sign at all. Right. 
Typically, do people park in the back? Yeah. Yes. yes. I don't know. Yeah. Yes. Because there's not parking really in the front. So you really do need the signage uh, back. How about, sorry, just throw this in there. How about a vertical RICO with an arrow at the bottom of it? I think that's something maybe we, you have. Have you opened that? Like a wall sign that's like on the edge? a wall sign that's just a vertical yeah. thing. Oh. Yeah. Arrow, arrow at the bottom. Can we pull that in here? The pole sign, yeah, the, the sign we have on West Main Street is part of the application. Yeah. <coughs> now you could do the letters that are oh. close to 20 inches, which is 418, which probably yeah. is enough. R I, I have okay. this pole sign in, in, in uh, one of our Stanford locations, which you could oh, put there, but I, I don't know how. But could you do going. individual letters? But that could be oh, uh, yeah. the same idea. Yeah. Like like you're doing right front, there, but just do it vertical. The words right there would bring your eye to the door. So, yeah. And then it would not push you to that door. And right. Just say, and maybe the arrow is either at the top or at the bottom, but just a small arrow mm -hmm. just pointing to the door. Because mm -hmm. I think that door being recessed in the shade and, and further back yeah, you miss is it. a little hard to find. But right. if there was an arrow, that would just help. Okay. I like that. But you were talking though, like again, like pin mount, like uh, the mounted letters, like you proposed in yeah, right here. in this thing, right. but vertical, vertical, vertical but right. your metal right. letters. Do them, do them back lit the same way is as the front. For this Why not? Why not? This is a, it's a front street. It's a street. Yeah. 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 It's a name street, so yeah. you get you get more light back there, rather than um, just the, above the door. Using, if I was to do that on the back, I would probably not, you know, I don't know. I don't know if the, uh, you know, it would have to look kind of like what that sign looks like with the thin crust going down the side. What do you need? The do you need the thin yeah. crust on I, I the back? Could probably in that back one just put Rico's. Yeah. yeah. People, do, everybody knows Rico's. Exactly. Oh, we right. live let's, for Rico's. Well, they yeah. already passed it. They already passed it. They already passed it. They come in and go around. We're not, <clears throat> okay, so I'm just visualizing the thing, Chris. You don't want to be vertical. I mean, R-I-K-O, stacked. Yeah. 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 What about that whole right side? Is, is that where the yoga sign is? Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. where it yeah. is. Yeah, so we, that's not available. But it's oh, not available. You can't see it from anywhere. Yeah. Then you quickly behind this tree. As soon as you turn, yeah. this is blocking you. <clears throat> is there ever going to be any outdoor dining in that corner, or no? Oh yeah, well, we're going to use the patio. Okay. I just was. The, uh, you I don't was have the, any room in the front here, no. but then you have some room back there. Oh, that's a that's a pretty good sized patio. Right. Um, so that kind of helps because you're you're yeah, signaling yeah, here is right. nice. bringing you to the mm -hmm. patio I mean, as well. But that sign was the okay. Best. Just mm -hmm. I want to make that point. Okay. So what do you guys think about the idea about doing the five letters, like the ones on the front to the oh. back, and you know, 18 Vertical. inches vertically down that that column, that that brick I like that. column yeah. set there. The I, I, I think that's doable. Yeah, because that get that answers your question. You get your signage on the, your main wall signage, mm -hmm. and you also draw people that to that entrance without losing a sign. Because that back wall sign is not doing anything for. And, and I think putting it there as you're looking at this sidewalk, it, it'll it'll bring people that way. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can also put a cling on that door for the the handful of people that are in Darien that don't know this. I mean, everyone goes to this building already. You could say entrance around side yeah. on that door. Right. You could put on cling letters. Okay. If anyone does walk, I mean, people are gonna walk up there and see their tables. <coughs> but I don't know. Everyone, I know. Everyone, everybody knows. It's a neighbor's door. It is a yeah, yeah. What do you think? Oh, we're good with it. Okay. Okay. So, so if you can, if you, if you, if you can produce the drawings that go along with what we just said, mm -hmm. you yep. send them to me. It's an administrative approval. Okay. That can be done quickly. Okay. So you don't have to come sure. back to visit us. You'll just go through Hervé, show him the PDFs. Well, he and I will work together. To I'll be back though because I was told I have to show you the furniture I'm going to put in the back patio. Okay. Uh, if you don't that, that I didn't want to rush because I want to be something really, That's going to be really, next really spring. Nice, so. when you okay. Thank you. I'm excited. When, well, when in the you meantime, come? you can go if you want to prove the sign to get that going. Yeah, send us those pieces. Work with your lace and the PDFs. Thank you. In the front, we're well, going to reduce the size, right? To mm -hmm. whatever Louise is. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. I think we said 14 inches. 14. Right? Yeah. Double yeah. check what that is though. Listen, I will, I will have them redo it. And I'll send that to uh, Hilton also. Thank you. Okay. No, we we'll just, we'll just say Rico's and not thin crust PTO. On the back, we'll just say Rico's in front. I leave the thin crust on the side, so I'll make the, the other letters small.
As long as we do not need a building permit for the for the permit, we need we need a building permit for the science. Right. 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 We need to come down to the site. All right. Is it last question? I told you. When are you guys open? As soon as possible. Like, was that like a month before? A couple months, maybe. A couple of months. There's not much to do. The place is pretty nice inside, and yeah. we're going to basically reuse a lot of the stuff. We have a full bar? Yes. Oh. 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 Even more this is where I'm going. Yes, I'm going to get the train. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if we approve your application swiftly, do we each get a free drink when we come to the bar? Two. That's true. That's true. Any other questions? We did not ask that question. That's true. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay. totally kidding. Thank well, listen, you. Next time I come, I'll bring pizza. Oh, oh yes. yes, you should bring we samples. We may not approve you, <laughs> <laughs> so you have to come back Thanks, again. everybody. Thank you, guys. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so Thank you. Um, okay, moving on. By the way, Michael um, did, um, wait a second here, I'll go back to the agenda. Did Michael Murray ever come in here from Spring Grove Cemetery? All right, okay, so we are moving on our agenda then. Yeah. Next up we've got Old Kings Highway, 9 Old Kings Highway, it's ARB 57, 2022. Hi. Hi. My name is Kevin Kane. I uh, own Hungwell Signs, and tonight I'm here to propose a new monument sign for Nine Old Kings Highway South. Okay, there's one there now, but um, you can see on the lower left, it's pretty beat up. So our proposal is to build this new one. Um, simple light box. I've made a sample of what um, the, um, how the light's gonna come through the letters. So this oh, yeah. gives you an idea of what, um, Great. I, I got some lights to stay on. It gives you an idea on exactly what I'm talking about. Basically, well, you can, you know, basically. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. So it's just like a simple outline on it, right? So. And that's nine old Kings Highway. Yeah, that's all that's, that's going to be. Yes. And then the individual businesses will just be. Yeah, same thing, but that's where the tenant, the bottom oh, letters. Oh, it would be. It would be. It'll be just like this, right? <laughs> and, I, and on the faces, there'll be the name of the tenants. So. It's just simple. Um, Paint it um, like this, just like this, exactly what it's going to be like. Painted aluminum? It's painted aluminum. Yeah, painted aluminum. The, the letters are painted aluminum or that aluminum paint? Yeah, this is all. That's well, paint. it's an like aluminum paint, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, it's and on. And they're in. Uh, are they, they're erased? Yeah, chlorine. Or is that it's cool. They're erased or they're inset? Inset. Inset. Oh, so we take the material, cut it out, route it out, and as you route it out, the letter gets a little bit smaller. So we just put the letter back in, and that's your outline. Right. Sounds pretty cool. Mm. Something different than the. Um, Halo wood. That's cool. nice. So, same size, which is, we, we want to bring it up a little bit because maybe a foot higher, just a little bit more visible. What's uh, the base made of the bottom part? Just aluminum as well. Like, okay. So aluminum, aluminum cage, it'll be, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, there may be drawings that, that I, I sent you guys that show the, um, how the base is going to be mounted into the ground. Yeah. Are they on here? Yeah, structural drawings? Yeah. Yeah, they are. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Hervé. Yeah, design drawings, maybe? It's the structure drawings? Structure drawings, correct. Right. Structure yeah. drawings, there we go. Would you love this technology? It's no, great, yes. Yeah, it's so great. Like... <laughs> it's great. I mean, it took, it took a while to get there, but it's uh, it's really great that yeah. we have this connection and everybody has their... Yeah. Absolutely. So again, this is just... Uh, 
pretty much the inside of this sign with the LED strips. And you know, it'll come together with the bolts and then a little bit lower. Oh, right. mm -hmm. That's interesting. I didn't even touch the thing. So. Is it going how on? Thick is, how, how thick is that? That's a great question. Thank you. Yeah, so, how deep is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, deep, the yeah uh, I think I have it under um, seven inches. Okay. So, so that's, this is seven inches? That's seven inches, correct. Thickness. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Any change to the landscaping around it? No, no. Just Wait, Kevin, I think we have a picture of before and after as well. I think. Yeah, it's there, there's. It's there. pretty oh. tall sign. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, it's 24 inches on the bottom, and then three feet on top. Right. Right now it's um, right now it's four feet. So right now it's, it's five a, feet. It's a, yeah. Well, it's pretty big. Well, right, right now it's a, a foot base. Yeah. And then it's got three feet above it. So we just want to bring it up a foot. That's possible. Okay, maybe not. Okay, okay. Oh, it's not in the building. It works. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it's. Okay. I don't think it's too big. Okay, that's good. So how tall is it? No. No family pictures in there. Okay. It's actually a big green jet big. Big yes. Perfect. Yeah. Pop out a little bit. Yeah. We're testing it. We can. You can. I can open it on my computer, but not on this TV. I'm good. Great. All right, Kevin, favorable report. Thank you for your time. Oh, okay, great. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Very elegant. Moving on, we have the Corbin Project. I know. It's not as exciting as Rico's Pizza. <laughs> well, he didn't bring samples, so it might be yeah, as exciting. We, can bring some, we brought samples. Oh, Hardy <laughs> Plank. Not the other one. Hardy Plank. Not, it's not the same as a pizza. And brick. And brick. Um, I know it's 8.30. He wants to talk fast. I always do. 30 so, minutes. But we talks. know what we don't because I want to listen more of a conversation versus sure. like, you know, that, that's my hope. So, so introduce yourself for the record. Sure. I'm David Genevieve, principal of Baywater Properties and um, the Baywater Corbin Partnership that's carrying out uh, the Corbin District Project downtown. Uh, with me is Kate Perez. Who's our development manager, oh, and Simon okay. Trollson, who is our property manager. Okay. Um, so we got a call. We, you know, I think the first thing you asked us to come here to talk about was just kind of an update on uh, material selection for the first phase, what I call phase one, um, the properties along Corbin Drive that are up. Um, we got an approval. I mean, just to make sure we're all on the same page, we got an approval in uh, 2018 for the pallet and the um, architectural design of the buildings for the whole project. Yes. Um, we shared with you, um, oh great, John. we shared with you um, that palette, and we have a copy of the presentation that we had made then, and I know some some of the members, wait, I have to speak to the microphone, right? It, yeah, so you is can stand on, you can stand on, on camera, oh, is the hope. Some of the members of this commi committee were not on the committee, I think, at the time, maybe Alex I, was not. I was not. You guys were. You guys there are two were other there. members that are here, are not, not here, here tonight. So I think, you know, we had gotten a call. I think, to be candid, I think the town historian got a little bit nervous about one of the buildings. Right. And kind of court. pushed panic and got nervous about Hardy Plank and are they changing their color palettes and are they kind of moving in the direction of um, more fashionable colors. Um, well, and I don't think we had just seen a dark. I don't, I don't remember we had seen a dark, so I think that was the list of the conversation. Not that it was not light, by the way. I think, yeah. I think it, was it was in the palette. Yeah, it, it does look beautiful. Beautiful. And again, we and again, thought the idea was that as we transitioned around Corbin, where you've got the building we built at 34 Old King Highway, which has that gray stone panel, the new building, yeah. and then 36, yeah. which has the darker gray Rhine Zinc panel, and we came around that corner, it was kind of a cool transition. Um, then, in honor of um, the town historian's love of, I think it's Walpole, New Hampshire, oh, yeah. um, we transitioned to a white. <laughs> I think it's Arctic white. That's Arctic white. Arctic white. So we have all the samples here in order. Um, basically, Arctic white is this um, area where compass sits. Um, actually, can we flip to, should, I, should we flip to that? Sure. If, um... Sure. The last one I sent you to. <laughs> Sorry, you've been part of Okay, so not this one. one. That's the signage program that we had approved a while back. You know, I don't need to take try to go back. Um, is this under your? Is that the same thing? No, this one came by email, but I, I also. by email? It came by email, but I also have it on a thumb drive. Um, 
So basically, let me, let me go kind of high level. What we tried to do was vary it, and I think you can see in the design of the building, we, we worked hard to kind of make this look like a cluster of buildings that happened over time. It's always been our theme. Um, if you look at the larger, 35 Corbin is the gray building, what we call the Tibbetts building. Um, if you look at 15 Corbin Drive, that's meant to look like distinct facades, and can it will have relief. Really, that's the middle building. The middle, building. In the, middle. The, okay. building in the middle. Okay. So that has different roof lines and different relief. It, it, it you know undulates in a way, so that it looks like there really are different buildings. And we even took it further and changed the windows wow. in each panel. If you think of it like as a as a building or a panel, we changed the windows um, so that it would really look authentic. Um, that's the signage. I don't. Know. No, that's right. This is, oh, this is, this is the kind of general okay. materials update. So, this is 35 Corbin, which is what we call the Tibbetts Building. This is 15 Corbin. This is 1040 Post Road. This was the gas station. Um, if you go up, Trevor, that'd be great. And maybe I'll do it just in the order of the. I'm oh, just sorry, down. I meant to say down. I apologize. Um, you can see, you know, the brick facade of um, the building, the back of 1040 Post Road. So that building will look like three buildings. Um, we've had comments already from people saying that, that they thought that building was, they wondered what that building had been before we renovated it. It was an old factory. Yeah, so that was kind of a, that was a compliment cool. to us. Yeah. Um, you can keep going. And again, you can see we use like a full size brick, like a high quality brick, um, and again, a different brick than we did at 1020. Post Road, which was an old Virginia brick, a hand strip brick. So this has a little less variation in it, but still more than your typical machine brick. And um, it looks just more authentic and real. You can keep going. Um, really another view. Been there forever. Yeah, and that's the goal. And that'll be the street, just looking yeah. at the Corbin building. That will be actually a street, a two-way yeah. street between the buildings. Um, David, does parking. the Corbin building go down? Is it the Port Corbin building will go down after the post office? Right. Okay. Um, we can keep going, and we'll come back to these pictures because they relate to the signage and some of the blade sign requests and so on. Um, this is the post road elevation, so you can just kind of see, you know, again, if you want to hear, like, we held the the side of the building down um, again to respect to 1020 and transition into 1020. Yeah. Um, it's very thoughtful. And on the corner, you know, because that corner is so important. Yeah. Again, you know, originally this was not going to be pulled back. We pulled it down, right. compromised the apartments a little bit. That's um, where Bank of America wanted nice to put bathroom. spotlights. Nice yeah. <laughs> they have, they have right. The good news, the security the, the good news <laughs> though, also just for whatever it's worth, just I know it's not your purview, but these buildings are leasing almost as fast as we're building them. So 35 Corbin was 100% leased already before it was finished, and that building 1040. Um, seven of the ten apartments were rented, and it's not even delivering till March. That's so that's right. really been great. Excellent. And the character of the people is what we expected: downsizers, um, young people who are coming here to like try to get a place in the market to learn about Darien and hopefully buy a house. Mm -hmm. No kids, right. you know, one pregnant. I think one one of the residents is pregnant, um, but you know, they're all kind of trying to find a place, and the inventory is not very high. Oh, I know, I know. We're we're, we're Here's 35 Corbin. Um, again, kind of one of the smaller buildings down toward the end as we transition toward, you know, Old Kings Highway South and, and Locust Hill. So, David and Kate, that's your one building in that color palette? Correct. Yep. That's the only one. Yeah, so that's okay. this color. Um, okay. And then the, the big middle building, again, has like the 30-foot base right. that, like, they, it transitions color. And these are the colors that are along Corbin Drive. Okay. Um, and then the, the, um, the one right on the post road is entirely brick, except for one kind of recessed area where the residential entry is. And that's, that's also okay. a, like a, a charcoal kind of gray. Got it. What did... Um, uh, the town historian think of the gray on the inside of the brick buildings. Uh, I don't think she had a problem with it. I think she liked the variation. I think she was just super happy. She was worried that we were going to go the entire strip in gray. She just, I think she kind of, it had been a while since we presented it. Right. And so I think she just was nervous. And she was nervous. She, she thought that Hardy was like changing their color palette yeah. to be fashionable. Yeah. And she was super focused on us being, you know, kind of okay. historic in approach. And so, you know, I think we all got a lot of comfort from the conversation and just kind of went through that with her to make, make her know that, like, we weren't picking, like, 
if she had some catalog for some retailer. That, she was, it there was, was some cat um, Talbots. Talbots. She was just nervous about colors becoming yeah. fashionable. The, the 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 you know the the black window trimmer, the dark window trimmer around yeah, so many right. yeah, homes, yeah, like things that that get that are sometimes happen often in a period of time, and then all of a sudden right. people look back and go, oh, that was that was so 1990. Right. Mm -hmm. But she We're was trying not to she do was that. concerned that the whole palette was going to be gray. No, well, no, no, no. That it was going to be jewel tones. Oh. Yeah, that no. we we were going to go into yeah, because no. that was she should, there was a sweater right stack the very pink sweater I think it was very pink um, well all very jewel tones and yeah. she thought that we needed to incorporate some of that in the building yeah so yeah. what is I, there, I'm surprised there's not as much white actually there's not as much white yeah or, or is that white a larger area it's, it's, it's a like, pretty big area if you, actually Irma, if you keep going I think it'll show up it should be the next you'll see the yeah. compass here we go this is the compass building okay. That's one of the bigger spaces in the project. And then okay. here, this is where uh, Morley will first go and then choose and more. Okay. So it's the ends. Okay. So that also wraps. This We're is not the showing the short end. facade. Right. The white wraps the side. And on one side, That's it goes two. to brick. On the other this side, the it wraps it all the way around phase two, white. So like right. it's, it's phase the, I think the darker it's or like brick whatever brick colors brick are more in the middle. So that end building is white all around. It's almost a full house. Sorry, I didn't realize. What is the street in front of there? It's Corbin. 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 That's across. And then this is from the municipal parking lot. Right. Facing Corbin Drive. Okay. And it's all hard, all hardy for this side of here. Correct. It's and all brick. hardy. Yeah, brick, brick on, yeah. The, on the post road. Mm -hmm. It's all hardy here. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. well, we have brick on like the facing the municipal parking lot on the left. That is all brick also. And I think wrapping around to about halfway. At that, yeah, but at the garage entrance to that, like if if you're looking at the short end of the building, that brick wraps around a portion of it, and the white wraps around like two thirds of it, because there's a garage entrance in the brick portion. There's a garage entrance right here, and 35 Corbin sort of, sorry, 35 Corbin sits here. Do you want to move? You can pull that. Oh, that's okay. okay. David is is. It's is that above screen. ground parking or is it below? Below. Yeah, it's yeah. below. Okay, that's that's below thought. ground. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. So when are we going to see um, the, pro the proposal of the colors and layout for the rest of Corbin? Like what's the stage? What's the next? The next phase? Yes. Of that. Binefield is selecting colors now. Okay. They're still tweaking the elevations of just like, you know, the proportions they play with and they're getting the window heights right and everything. But um, I would say in like two or three weeks, Bruce will have a pass at all the materials. So he puts them all up on one <coughs> wall. He has to like see it all. In one Did you ever way. see um, Homeland? Yeah. Bruce yes. yeah. You know Carrie's oh. wall? Oh, no. Yeah. That's what this is like. Oh, yeah. Bruce gets like that. He's totally into it. He's totally into it. He might be more obsessed than we are. Probably not. But, but you know, it's, then it's like, it's easy to trust him because he, like, he's thinking about it so much that there's, there's no adjacency that we think of that he hasn't already mapped on the wall. You know what I mean? <laughs> So, um, can, so we'll come back in you know early in the new year with that. That's what I was going to ask you. We come back and the colors that. don't really drive pricing. I mean, where we are right now, just to give you kind of an overall sense, um, we thankfully were able to get the post office to relocate. Um, oh, where are they going? Really? They're going to Good Wives Shopping oh. Center, where Chocolate Works was. So, are you Good Wives? Is going no, in there? no. Mm -hmm. We had given them the option to go into this building, which they agreed to like three years ago, and then right. they changed their minds. They didn't want to move twice. Okay. So, they're going to go to Good Wives, which is in construction right now. Um, hopefully, that won't take very long. And um, you know, we've basically um, been pre-leasing the second phase, all the retail and the restaurants. We've basically rented all the restaurants for our project. We've got one, maybe two more to figure out, but we're pretty far along with wow. most of the restaurants. Yeah, which is really cool. And, um, you know, from an, you guys can appreciate it, especially from an architectural and engineering point of view, like knowing what we're doing at this stage makes it a lot easier for the mechanical engineers oh, because yeah. we can tell them where the kitchens are going oh, and everything. Absolutely. Yeah, and so um, that's been really good. So, um, so the, the plan is to take the post office down next month. Um, it would have been this month, but Christmas we're going to wait. And then, um, you know, relocate. Once Bank of America is done, Re and, and the first floor spaces are done in the, in the 15 Corbin and the 35 Corbin building, this building. Okay. Um, sorry, 15 Corbin will be done like next month. We're going to move everybody over, Morley, Green and Tonic, 
toy, toy box, Helena and Sin, etc. Okay. Everybody will move over and then we'll wow. take down face. Wow. So you'll two. take down that whole triangle. Everything from Corbin Drive okay. to Bank of, through Bank of America. Holy cow. Yeah, we the relocated all the tenants basically out of 10 Corbin and we've relocated almost all the tenants out of the Bank of America building. So but Q, Q1 of next year? Q1 of next year, they'll be like dynamite or okay. big bulldozer. Can you wow. tell us some of the new restaurants coming in? Uh, sure, Chopped is, oh. is done. Cool. Um, Hinoki, which is a super cool Japanese restaurant from Greenwich. And the owner of Hinoki were psyched, um, actually moved to Darien. Cool. He got so into the project, he moved here, which is great. Um, we're on the one inch line with Millie's from Nantucket in Washington, DC, which is gonna be super fun. Um, the owners of Le Penguin and um, really? Orienta have a very cool concept that they want to do with us Penguin. that they're working on. Great. Yeah, it's called Le Sauvage, and it's like <laughs> the greatest hits, mm -hmm. the greatest hits of Le Penguin and the greatest hits of Orienta combined. Mm -hmm. Fun fact: the chef won. He beat Bobby Flay. Wow. Sorry, I have to be careful. Kate told me 30 minutes, not longer. I can't <laughs> chat. I'm <laughs> chatting. Well, I'm capturing myself I got, chatting. I don't want to do that. Yeah. So what about um, the materials for the roof? Is, is, are all the roofs the same? No. So, so we, we have here? asphaltic roof on 35 Corbin and on... Um, Did you bring samples? On this. Well, the no, because it's installed um, on 35 Corbin. Okay. Here, you know, I think it was specified in the drawings. The colors were specified. We upgraded... The, shingle, the shingles to a synthetic slate on the Bank of America building okay. to kind of, again, follow that synthetic slate that we have at um, 1020. Okay. So we wanted that to be a little bit more sure. formal. Yeah, sure. um, and you're going to see it more, you are. whereas yeah. you're really not. When you're on Corbin Drive, given the, the width of this road, yeah. you're not going to really see those roofs. Is that standing That's seam, though, that, one, that, col that center column, the white column? Is that standing seam at the top? This? I yeah. don't think so, Kate, isn't it? Just, I think that's just... I think that might just be a graphic. Yeah, I don't um, think so. Okay. okay. When you guys come back for the other part of Corbin, I know you don't want like another whole crowd, can you bring, bring colors of, sure. your, of the roof so we can see yeah. the whole yeah. perspective? Yeah, and just so you know what we did, Bruce, we did have Bruce join us with the town historian, just so he could kind of Great. immerse in her Great. thinking and then yeah. out of respect for her, right. you know, hear it so as he kind of puts the fine touches to phase two, you know, he's got all that in his head. I like that. Yeah, I mean, so. Marion's got a brilliant point. I mean, we definitely designed for like, you know, for the times, right? Yeah. And like, you know, she's been around long enough to understand how those are fleeting enough. So I think it's, yeah. a, it's a, a smart yeah. perspective. No, it's a good Yeah, reminder. like remember where you are. Yeah, oh, yeah it's totally. not just no, no. the next 20 Well, years. listen, I hope you guys can appreciate. I mean, we have like, you know, this is, t it's in a way torturous, like <laughs> building multiple buildings, trying to do what we're trying to do. It's so different than what other people in the region are doing. It's so much harder. It's so much more expensive, but it's the right thing. Like this is a walkable village, and I can tell you, like I take all the tenants around, and the commercial tenants and the apartment tenants on tours, and everybody's sort of looking at this, going, "Oh my God, it's gonna be the best downtown." In it's the region. Sure. It's yeah, strange. people are really psyched. I mean, it's we're if if everything goes the way it should, like we will pre-lease all of the retail. Like in the next six months. Fantastic. That's insane. That is that is incredible. Okay, tell so, us what you got in here. Let's can we go over your signs? Yeah, so you the talk signage. About, we talk about one other thing oh, yes. just before we oh, yeah. move on. Um, Mary, do you mind scrolling down a couple pages? It, there'll be another photo. Construction <laughs> signs. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, well, we got in trouble. We got in trouble. I thought Woody just came signage. by to say hi. Oh yeah, for the temporary signage. I know that's been that's been actually a long concern, but we were down with COVID. We go down. Can you yeah, make keep a pitch on this? So on the post road, we have the M and T bank sign like shown that there. Cool banner. Yep. Yeah. And then on the next <laughs> on the next page, we have on Corbin Drive uh, a Papa, Papa John Joe. sign. That's yep. it's kind of at the construction gate. Yep. Um, the the signs are I don't have the exact measurements, but you can see them. They're you know four <coughs> feet wide by two and a half or three feet tall, and we. We want to make a case for keeping them. The I want to make a point that we don't have a leasing sign. Mm -hmm. We don't have a like Corbin District by Baywater. We, we have a fun shielding graphic like work, Come live, time. play, yeah. the Corbin District, like that thing to kind of dress up the ugly construction fences. Um, but we don't have a four lease sign, which is really kind of shocking. Because like, you don't need one. It's, it's insane. It's, insane. it's all word of mouth. 
Um, but but M&T, you know, formerly People's Bank, that's the lender for the project, they're so proud of this project. And, you know, like we were at a construction <coughs> financing event with all different developers and builders and lenders uh, two weeks ago. And you know, M and Bank brings it up and says, "We're we are so excited to be part of this transformational project in downtown Darien. Like, if you've seen it, you know, take a drive by, whatever." Sure. And like, I, I know I it's you know, green is not like you know, it's it's not our favorite like graphic or visual, but uh, you know, just it's from really our perspective, we're kind of like they're the ones enabling the project to happen, and also like they're so proud of it, and they just you know, they want to own it you know to, so what are you asking for this sign and the other and one the two sides sign, yeah the other thing with papa john we can put them on different streets too like one could be on so the first road and one like, could be on can you put this yeah. in um an email i mean this is more this is this is a play or anything i mean this is not arb as much unless you, we, you get an endorsement from the arb here but like i think they need to see because you making it i think the bigger thing is making an exception for you guys yeah opens up yeah a whole so couple I, 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 I'd, like to, I'd like to say something about please this. we've had uh, asked for banners of the same exact size, nature, type, mm -hmm. for Darien Commons, and they were rejected because they were not complying with the regulation. Banners are only something that's to be used for one week during a grand opening, not during a construction period. So if you really want to have a sign for six months, let's make it a sign that mm -hmm. looks like a sign. Not a banner. We could do that. That's hanging. And it's on the building. And well, in, yeah, yeah. Or, or, or something that that plays. Maybe it's part of the construction fence, but it's not something that's slanging. That's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Now, because that it, it's going to be there for more than a week, right? You're gonna yeah. And look, phase two will be the same. Well, we'd have the same request for phase two, but again, we could do it. No, you know, I, one of the front. Well, like so that's a that's kiosk or something that has those names on it, like or, almost like a sample. I, I recognize the need, the need for the business to be, to be, you know, uh, they're sponsoring this, so they're really excited, and I understand the marketing yeah. part. Uh, for the Papa John sign, Woody was here in the room before, and I think he just went home. But uh, where did he go? Oh, shoot, sorry, it went too fast. Wasn't it? Was any part of this? Yeah, I think it was. What? It's not um, back. You know, it's back. That was the old 2018. Anyway, so the Papa John sign that you all saw for, for a second there, um, there was a discussion, we had a discussion in the office about this where typically contractors sign or set back 30 feet from the, the street line, which is not great in your case because you have all sorts of things going on. And there's a small little sign that says, you know, so and so is doing the work, right? Uh, it sounded like one of the discussions that happened was instead of having a Papa John sign in front of each of the building that's being built or repeated several times, it'd be grouped under one bigger sign. So that's something that's <coughs> already a bit of an exception. Well, we were we actually and, had people putting up, like we had a plumber at one point, I think the plumber just stealthily, or not so stealthily, tried to put up a sign. So we took those down. Right. Someone from Town Hall called us. Right. We took those down. So Papa John is your general They're the general contractor. Right. So... To have it on the fence does set up a precedent that that I'm fighting in other places in town. So we have to we do have to put that in writing if we're going to do this and say okay, maybe for aesthetic reason, just having one sign in one location for the contractor is going to be acceptable because that sign again is not very temporary. It's going right. to be there for a while. Okay, so let's let's make it like a permanent sign. It, it actually looks fairly permanent in terms of its construction, better than the banner. Yeah. But let's say it's a sign, therefore it has a permit as a sign permit, and just we just work with it. We don't have any problem coming back. And it's we can we can like talk a, off. It's a wall sign. It's it really solution. becomes a primary wall sign it's a good for solution. the project. Yeah. 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 Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's just I'm, I'm looking at it in a kind of yeah. a I like the legal solution. way yeah. of it. And since we're here asking, like, are you guys okay with what we did with the construction fence, like decorating them, like make it's not a sign, it's not advertising it. There's no phone number where it says. I don't know if you noticed, but it yes. says like the Corbin District Live Work Play. Like we just wanted to dress it up and and not make it look so blah because those construction fences are pretty nasty. 
they're not here, but it's further up. You'll see. Yeah. If you drive by in the next couple of days, just let yeah, us know if you have any concerns or. We did that with 1020 Post Road when we built 1020. We did like an art, art, art contest with kids in the high school. And we had kids paint images of like what they wanted to be doing downtown. And then the art teacher and I picked out like the 10 best. And then we digitized them and made banners. And it was just fun. And like the kids would come by and look at it. We might want to try to do something like that in phase two. But it would be, you know, um, tasteful. And we, if you want us to come talk about that too, we can next year. Personally, I'm a big fan of creating a more artful <coughs> fence yeah. screen. Sure. Seen my fair share of ugly things. Yeah, like just not there. I think it's fun. And even just, to me, you know, it's temporary. It's this is this is this is a development project for a large chunk of our downtown. This is not a one-off. That's correct. That's why. It has... So I, I feel like having exceptions for this sure. makes sense. It's not right. like somebody's re nobody well, else is doing it. It's like for federal realty on the lower floor. Yeah. You know, we approved that screening for all the right. storefronts. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. See that as a similar. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to flip to the Lima Dean and the signage? So in 2020, and we just want to make sure we also understand like what we're what we're doing because this is all kind of new to us as well. We've always right. obviously come to you for specific signs right. approvals. Okay, so we're going to move on to like the right, actual we're go to the actual application. Airbnb number 54, Airbnb number 56, Airbnb number 58, and Airbnb number 53. Let's yeah. Start with Barrett's just because we can kind of walk sure down the street. Okay. But I just want to I just want to ask you one question though too because like we came in 2020 for a sign package sign program. Mm -hmm. So I'm the one doing the leasing. So when people ask me right. what can we do in terms of signage and when we're negotiating the lease, we're actually saying this is the pre-approved regulations for this project. So that lays everything out. I feel like that, that was kind of, maybe I phrased that wrong. I, I know I'm causing some issue with you guys now. Yeah. You, it was never meant to be pre-approved, flat. Like, you do this, you're approved. It was it was meant as a guideline. And that's why, like, we phrased it as guidelines. I thought it was it was written as guideline in your thing. And for federal, it was guideline. So they thought the same thing. Right. It's caused problems. Because now when things come together, it well, just, we thought it was, like, a, here, a, here are the parameters. This is, if you stay within these parameters, these are approved because... We didn't think you wanted us to come a hundred times. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to be like, we're going to have a hundred signs mm -hmm. or more. And so, you know, I, I think that's what I we all understood, that, and I, that's how we presented I it to people. That one kick. being much more yes. rigid, rigid mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. deliberate and well thought out for each location right. that didn't really give the tenants that much leeway. It doesn't. Well, <laughs> the thing is, though, also, like, when I, we're seeing it together, they're like, seeing these now i mean there's comments on these like i, I know like people's vision is all very personal i don't know it's like it's it becomes the vision of the individual tenant and not like a town oversight i, I so as chair i wish you guys got to come back i know you don't want to hear that but i really like seeing you dave I know. <laughs> we like you here. well we do have fun we do have fun but it's just I a know. lot and the thing is like but the thing, if it's if it's built based on the construct of what yeah. you're designing, it should be super simple. These I told Kate, these should on the this should be three minute each of these. Like okay, it's this this gun. Next okay, one, so this. tonight's the first test. It shouldn't be the big yeah. It's the first one. <laughs> and it should we be are that. worried about yeah. so so if we have like 50 tenants, we are worried about like iterative, the amount of like staff time on our like if we have you know, 30 applications going at once, it's going to be a lot of and like I have to be candid. Like Gregory scared me. I've been kind of watching Gregory's from a distance. Oh. I mean, that guy's been here like four times. Yeah, that was rough. Yeah, that was rough. And I just look at that and I'm like, I, I, but again, he was building all within the concert, the guidelines, all that they, there comes all within the guidelines. But they've it's been. What like, if it's digitalist? And if we have a problem, then we'll call. We it have done work. admin approval for a that lot of stuff. Yeah. yeah, you guys just think about it. I just think you're gonna. This is big, and it's gonna all yeah. start to come. Let's we've got see. we've got to warm up here with this first test of. Three or four. Let's see, then, let's see how the first handful, let's see how these go in the next set. Yeah. I mean, how much commentary there are on these versus, versus the other ones. Like, Dave, how are people taking, how are the tenants taking the guidelines? They want more I think way? that generally, they they've, been well, generally they, they've been well received. Yeah. Are they, oh, they but keep, like, it, keep in mind, in the first phase, a lot of these are existing dairy and businesses. Oh, so they I mean, look at the right. Barrett sign. The Barrett sign oh, yeah. is basically the same plate sign we have today. Yeah. Um, so they're pretty good. I would say the on the new of the new people. Um, 
I don't foresee anything really deviating materially from what we put forward in the guidelines. Um, you know, but again, the one thing, like watching Gregory's a little bit and seeing what was going on with federal, you know, remember we have, and Kate, Kate will make this point in a more articulate way, but like we have all these private streets. We've got right. storefronts yeah. that face Corbin Drive and then wrap around mm -hmm. to the private street and the, and the municipal lot. And we're trying to figure out how to make this really walkable and pleasant and so people can kind of come out of the municipal parking lot yeah. by what will be 1020 yeah. post and yeah. find their way to Barrett. Yeah. So Kato, Kato kind of walk you through that. Oh, the, the, by the way, one point about like the, the it's being a pre-approved, like you'll see like when sometimes can like come in, like you'll have like green pin letters. Then you'll have another section of like, you know, like an orange pin letter, small different font, and then you'll have another, and then all of a sudden you'll have a sign, like a, like a, a cheesy bag, like, you know, PVC alongside this wood pin letter mountain, and the rhythm is lost. And I don't know if that's like something you guys are looking for, well, or if that's I mean, like, do you know I, what I mean? There's, yeah, no, no, I do. I so look. that's the oversight that I feel yeah. like I would tell you. About. I would tell you, um, our tenants are different than I think what you've seen so far, like in Northern Heights, because you're seeing a lot of national totally. tenants with like big brands. Yeah, totally. They want you know, everything. And they're like less flexible. We've got more flexible people. I mean, you know, of the restaurants I just laid out for you, like none of those is really a national group. Chopped, um, Chopped is national. Yeah. Chopped, and you know, by the way, so Chopped, we, we should show you like the evolution of an, of an application because the, the initial Chopped schematic. Yes. Kate, Aqua. you trained Kate Aqua. well. <laughs> they, wanted to paint, go away. they wanted to paint the whole building. Um, <laughs> Good job, Kate. <laughs> so that got killed. So yeah. like we're killing things before they come to you. We're not just giving you yeah. what the tenant asked for. Yeah. So it's probably a little different than the approach some people take. Um, so the other thing is this because this sits in the downtown we're like we're dealing with this with wayfinding too we want all of the buildings to fit into the downtown and just feel like part of the downtown rather than like you've arrived at the Corbin district and have like you know so we looked at some examples of developments in like LA that are very tastefully done and all the signage is black and white and like some of them have uniform fonts even like it's very it's kind of restrictive, Car Carmel, and it's beautiful. Carmel, California, every single oh, yeah. store is in burgundy <coughs> with white letter. Yeah. Royal Ponciana Plaza in Palm Beach. Oh, gosh. Very yeah. beautiful. It's, it's amazing, right? It's beautiful. It actually loses some of it's the... Beautiful, it's not authentic. But it would feel like its own thing, and like the rest of the town was something else. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Right, yeah. So we're like trying to have some of that like distinct and authenticity in each of the... And then so the harmony at the same time. So yeah. it's, it's I have a, a question about your blade signs. And it's been a question I've been raising even with existing tenants downtown. I feel like there should be consistency if they're to the right of the front door or to the left of the front door. We can't because like sometimes you have a gas lantern or you know. Yeah. A but then say you have two people side by side and two signs. Yeah, it just depends. I mean, like like in the case, I'm just thinking of like, think of Jay McLaughlin. On the left of the front door is a, um, is, a, is a gas lantern. If you have gopher on the end, on the right of their front door is a gas lantern. So if you put it on the left, it, you know, all on the left, it'd be against the gas light and Jay McLaughlin finally gopher. But at some point, aren't you going to have two signs that are? Um, we're going to have to deal with that. Yeah. So we're going to come back in January with the big middle building. So today we have the signs for the two end buildings that are under construction. Now the middle building that's longer, where it's 30 foot bays, we're going to have to deal with that. Because yeah, so we, we, we want it to be nice that if a lot of the people have blade signs and you're kind of looking along that big building and there's a lot of layers, but we're going to have to deal with that yeah. so they're not up against you know, each other. Actually, together, I yeah. thought, Leslie, you were going to ask a different question, and I'm sorry, but uh, I've in the Historic Preservation Commission I worked for before, or supported before, brackets for hanging blade signs would be something that would be coordinated. As in, maybe there is a style so you don't get like different types of, of hanging brackets for the blade signs, and, and the bracket itself becomes part of the project overall. Mm. But then that's you something find yourself that you can play with. You know, you can we don't want to be too similar yeah. without yeah. being I, I like the same that. everywhere, but you, just, you wouldn't have one that has like a, a modern style and one that's like all ornate. You just got to yeah. work with the style that works. The same way people were asking, where was that building used before? Well, 
you know, this this is appropriate for for this building, but then do you play a certain language? And I don't. Do you agree with? I mean, I'm just. This I, is a discussion item. I personally, I think that creating a unique sign, including the bracket for each location, is kind of part of our downtown. Yeah. Okay. Every every sip and stir. And the, your your yeah. whole point here is not to make it a. It wasn't done by one person. Yeah. Right. Or one architect. Exactly. That's like the ultimate. Yeah, and so that that variety, that variety and um, interest, I think, is appropriate. I, I am not it's part of the narrative. Of, it, absolutely, you know, I I don't think having the same of everything yeah. is, is the right approach. I think we just have to figure it out, you know, together. Like we'll show you what we're thinking, and and know that like just know that we're really we're we're not just spitting back to you what tenants are asking for. Um, you know, we've gone back and forth with everybody, almost everybody, a few times, and. Um, and we've rejected some things that we just didn't think were appropriate from our point of view, and we knew you would hate. So, that being said, all these brackets look the same. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, so the biggest issue that we've had with, with federal is uh, not issue, but uh, the reason why we've wanted to see them come back with each one is to see, like you were talking about before, how individual signage and storefront sit together that might be presented individually and then all of a sudden we realize that they're actually sitting together and mm -hmm. how do they work together so mm -hmm. you know it's a difficult problem to try to solve um, you know on one, such a large scale when you have 50 different tenants but yeah. if there's some way that you know you can create you know the elevations of all the storefronts and maybe say you know we know that we're going to have these 10 that are going to fit within each other in a certain way and um, if there's some way to not deviate from that or you know, a 3D model that can kind of show mm -hmm. us how, you know, these uh, these two elevations fit together and, and what the options are for signage. Um, um, I'm feeling the pressure on the leasing to, like, get these buildings leased <laughs> en masse. You know, but, like, I think what you'll see is for these presentations, you're going to see the buildings, these two buildings all at once, and these are all permanent tenants. So the I, first I two buildings, these two seem, these they're permanent. They're not simple. people, like, in the next building, 15 Corbin, you're going to have three or four people who are going to relocate, and then we'll have to come back. But these are permanent, so you're going to see the whole building. So you'll see Barrett, you've seen Bank of America, and then Sale to Sable. Okay, so let's see how you let's quickly get through these. So Barrett's is straightforward. It's an L shape. Um, uh, and basically, we're doing the exact same thing on both facades. I think we looked at one of the, the images of the built facade earlier. Um, so one facade faces Corbin Drive, this one. Um, the other one, that looks very similar to this, faces that private driveway. Um, and basically the proposal is pin uh, sorry, uh, pin mounted metallic gold letters, um, pin mounted to the brick, same size sign on each side, um, and an adjacent blade sign uh, that's similar to what they have today. Not lit. The pin not letters lit. are not lit, but there is a little light in the blade, right? Yes. So we want to do the um, like a pin light integral to the bracket that shines on the blade sign, and uh, Pliables has that. And it's just kind of a nice, it's not bright, it's like just kind of a nice wash of the sign to, so it's a little bit more visible <coughs> um, at night. Um, but that's kind of the long and short of it. I don't want to talk too much about it if you guys have questions. Um, the reason for doing the signs on the private driveway side is because we expect a lot of customers to park in the municipal lot that's behind 1020 um, and extends all the way back to CVS. So if people park over there, there's no way to know who's in this building unless you're, you know, you have sort of something on that facade. So that was kind of the reason that both Barrett and the sale to Sable ones have repeat their signage on that side. And you felt there was going to be heavy pedestrian traffic back there that, that called for it, but also an additional blade sign? Blade sign. So, the, so um, it's a lot of blade actually, signs. If you want to go down to this one, this is a pretty big facade. Um, so we have a blade sign here, and I apologize, because this is the Barrett Bookstore one, they didn't update to show, the sale to Sable one has the blade sign there. Um, but it's a pretty big facade, and it's it, like when you look at it kind of holistically, it's I don't think it's going to feel like a lot of signage for a facade that big. Um, and we have sort of the, 
uh, the coach lamp lights on either end, some trees and plantings, and this is actually parking along the private drive and then the two-way drive through. So there's, you know, there's some extra layers and things in there too. To, to give you a sense too of like from a leasing point of view what's happening, so um, Morley is going to take the space opposite this temporarily and then they're going to relocate to the post road and Shoes and More is going to take the Morley space when Morley moves. Shoes and More is in a shopping center in Westport with Granola Bar. Granola Bar is taking over Parlor and like Shoes and More is excited to be next to Granola Bar because the mm. woman who runs Shoes and More loves the owners of Granola Bar and like she knows her customers are Granola Bar customers. Yeah. Like so to your That's question okay. about like the foot traffic, they're all building on each other now. Mm. You know, and they're all like looking at it going, Oh, I wanna be next to them. I wanna be over there. I'd rather be here. Um, so it's kind of So happening. Parlor is going away. Parlor has closed. Oh they've closed. Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately. Yeah. So regulation wise, not to be the regulation guy here, but I am no, it's okay. so, um, a street as a certain definition for the primary wall sign, the private drive or the parking is not a main street, right? It is not yet an alley. Or it's so there are different ways to look at the sign when it's not on a on a, as much of a it is a right of way, it's public right of way, so we'll have to kind of refine the language there if you want to have the same size, because typically in the, and Liz and I went over this when we, we had a conversation last week, you would be 32 square feet on the main post road or carbon drive, but you'd have a secondary wall sign which is a whole lot smaller on mm -hmm. the back, which I think is seven square feet, or as per ARB recommendation, mm -hmm. so there's that you know, that extra line in there that said, okay, well, in this case, it is a backside or it's, yeah. not, it's not a street. Just, you know, the same well, as good, good Wives is a parking lot. So there's been a lot of ex exemptions being made at Good Wives Shopping Center because they're not really along a, a main street that's a parking. Well, so keep we, in mind, we actually we, define size that way. But keep in mind, we did give the town an easement. I think the town actually has a legal easement right over that area. Right. So, and the whole point of that was to connect Corbin Drive to the sure. municipal parking lot. Right. So, is it a street or is it a? Oh, I know. It's just. I, a, it's, it's a little nebulous. Yes. Right. So we the, actually want to. And that's why there's a board like yeah. this board who can say, "Hey, this is a highly public sp used space. Therefore, signage makes a lot of sense." Right. So, uh, thank you for bringing that up. That is a good point. So, I want to put that to the board just so you guys know and having a record of what you guys think about it now seeing it so this is going to happen about a hundred times this right. that condition mm -hmm. that we have an entire building um in the next phase that has no public streets around it it's all right you know, in private court. Streets. Yeah. so that was part of the reason why we did the signage um proposal uh in 2020 because we have so many internal private streets that but per the regulations, some of these tenants would not be allowed any signage. Mm -hmm. They're like, you know what I mean. So, right. so the, with the with those with that proposal, we said private driveways, public plazas, and you know public walkways or whatever it is count towards the facade square footage and can receive, um, you know, st street appropriate basically signage. Um, because we do have a lot of tenants that wouldn't comply for or wouldn't be eligible for any signage. Right. So is that in this? Yeah. Yes. It's yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that yeah, because like this building, building F has no front, no street frontage, and like this tenant has no. I thought this was going to be called Genevieve's Plaza right there. No, that's, that'd be the kiss of death. <laughs> no. So this, um, we actually are working on this right now with. Um, the tax assessor. We kind of gone through it with Tony and McKee already, but the idea is that this would be called Penny Lane, no. and this would be Market Street. Mm. Okay. But and this is just the unnamed kind of parking area. Yeah. I think that's 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 an interesting diagram yeah. to keep in mind, just in terms and of if, exposure. Yeah. We're yes. talking about these these guys right here, mm -hmm. right? Uh, mm -hmm. Barrett Bookstore yep. and uh, oops, uh, sales, sales. sales. And in that inside yeah. section there, yeah. yeah. Right. So see that that's really like a cut through little. Yeah, yeah that's a two way street into. 
Yeah, it is. Okay, so to continue the conversation, I think, it's I think it's appropriate. Yeah. And I, I remember having this conversation in 2020 about mm -hmm. this particular issue, and I mm -hmm. think we were okay with it then. So, right, good. good. All right. So you, you jumped into it. I don't think you even had to defend it. I think you yeah. let the board, they would have said, we thought it was good. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Barrett Bookstore, are we, so, uh, I have no two no blades of, no I have no issue. Okay, next one. Okay, the next one is, is showing Air, on Barrett's. It's Sale to Sable, the cabana. Airbnb number 54. Okay. The cabana is in their business name. The cabana, yeah, yep, we know. We, we did approve it the last one. We yeah, did yeah, that yeah, tonight. Okay. Yep, we're ready for that one. STS, the cabana. Um, Thin crust pizza. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for confirming. So this tenant is on the corner. Um, it's not a big space. It's like 900 square feet. Um, so they are doing exactly what the Barrett application does, and they have a Corbin sign and Glade sign, and then a private driveway side or public driveway side um, wall sign and Glade sign. Um, the signage that's proposed is compliant in terms of the square footage, right. and when we put it next to Barrett's, it like it's a little smaller, um, but that's kind of what they're allowed from a facade length uh, standpoint. I think, I think it's also it's a white a, a box, mm -hmm. and I think that. Also, just from a visual graphic mm -hmm. representation, makes it feel small. smaller. Yeah. Also, a white box over an arch, you know, a yeah. Um, yeah. eyebrow, yeah. you know, yeah. which is too tough. Yeah. I was telling Kate off, you know, we talked about Hervé, and um, I called Kate about it and asked, you know, did Gabana consider elongating it to almost match the window set above so it looks more appropriate for the building size? Mm -hmm. she said they were limited, so they kept within, but I threw that out there. Like, it almost looks too narrow. Mm -hmm. the Are they allowed the cabana? Too, too sure. Like the yeah, too, too sure. That's in their legal name. Yeah. The, That's a legal name, yeah. No, like Oh, the logo the and the image of the thing? I think you're allowed yeah. to you're allowed you're allowed allowed go. Um so we do have the version. Um okay, it might be an email rather than in viewpoint, uh, with the bigger with a larger facade sign that's a little bit it's still smaller than Barrett, but it's a little bit more. You didn't bigger. upload it? I didn't upload it to it's viewpoint. Okay. <laughs> I'm learning the ropes. I also have it on a phone drive. Everybody's working magic over there for the first time, and now you're having to pull the emails. This is not water. Yeah, yeah seriously. <laughs> um, um, our email from how far back though? So today. As he today. Pulled, yes. <laughs> as he pulls that up, um, the reason they went with a white board versus like a pin mail letter is because all the detail on the sign, right? I think it's all the detail with like the picture of the cabana and okay. also like it's almost like a Greek pattern around the edges okay. that, that I don't know, like they could pin mount sail to sable, but they'd probably lose the little cabana and they couldn't do a border. Okay. There it is. Okay, you just passed it. No, no. That one, was one the, question uh, Corbin, I have on the oh. Corbin the General. No, we have Darren Cleaners, and then that's coming up, right? So, there you go. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, Rock David Riley. What do you have a question? Uh, I'm just looking at the uh, where the blade sign is over the gooseneck lamps. Is that so? I'm, I'm seeing that the, these gooseneck lamps along where that parking is, but not on Corbin yes. Drive, correct? Yes, there are. There are. Um, Lights along the driveway, mm -hmm. uh, not along Corbin Drive, that are kind of like lighting the sidewalk back there. Okay, um, it's just not represented underneath the blade sign in the, in the elevation. So I'm, I'm just a little concerned about clearance. That's eight foot four inches up That's the to one. the bottom of that blade sign. Mm -hmm. And then you have this light with the canopy on it. That's interesting. So how high are they? In Remember, I'm very good at finding are those them. seven foot doors. Um, those are because the bottom of that light is. This uh, is an eight like foot a, door. It's an eight foot door. Yep. So the top. So if of it's that an eight foot four inches to the bottom of that blade sign, that might be a little tight, right? Yeah. Twenty four inch. And what do we say? Normally nine nine. Yeah, on, for the barracks on the oh, corner side, it's like nine feet. People are not running. No, but the, exactly. the round nature of the sail to sable is a little bigger. Mm -hmm. So I'm just concerned that it might be bumping into that light or something. 
Yeah, no. I think we need to add, like, what we need to look check it against the light locations, because we're not showing um, this elevation. We're not showing, we have, oh, here they are, the lights. Oh, oh like, yes, we need to look at the light yeah. mounting height, but it should. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we did, I'm sorry, we did look at this. This is, is all all set. Yeah. All right. That's a great call. That's a great spot. So if we're 8'4 to the underside here, and these, uh, so I'm sorry, this is taller because these are 8 foot, door, uh, foot doors. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so this is this is being shown higher. Yeah. Um, Right, so the this section is probably showing this lower. It should be sh shown closer to nine feet off the ground. To so the bottom. To the, so the bottom. bottom. The light. Mm -hmm. And are all the blade signs at the same height? Sorry. Yeah. Um, they should be. Um, Let's go back. Yeah, you're going to you're gonna have lights and little doohickey every time. No, Barrett's is 16 stuck. inches. This is 24 inches round. Right. So I think the brackets are at the same height, but the signs may be higher or lower at the bottom. Okay. We, have different, yeah. we definitely yeah. want to have different shapes. Yeah, as long as the brackets yeah. are at the yeah, same. The bracket, the bracket should be the same. Yeah. 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 Ha. <laughs> I, I guess as long as it doesn't bump the light, it's just... Uh, yeah. So, Kate, is this, a, is this alternate um, proposal... It, it What's the difference? Yeah, right. Is it just? I think it's by like one square foot per sign, but this mm -hmm. is technically non-compliant. Like it. it's be it's beyond their facade, you know, calculation in square footage. Okay. Um, but okay. it's just a little bit closer. Which do you prefer, Kate? Okay. Like which one do you think is better? Um, I like. I think this is. I think the bigger one's a yeah. little bit more clear. Like I generally like smaller signage, but I worry that this is like not great with legible legibility on the smaller one. It's but I, I agree. I think yeah. the bigger sign looks better. Yeah. Too. Mm -hmm. it seems to get a little tight above the arch. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. To the brick I think the above. size is more appropriate. It's just it's a little. Yeah, the length. The the length is more appropriate, but the mm -hmm. width is not. Mm -hmm. The height, the height, the height, thank you. Yeah, it looks squished. Squeeze a few inches yeah. out on top and bottom, yeah. We could play with that. Okay. All right, so the big, and the again, just keep, that, keep, keep in mind, February 15th, we're supposed to deliver the Bank of America branch, and March, stop, March 10th, I think, they're opening? March 3rd. March 3rd. They're supposed okay. to open, yes. And then, you know, that'll kind of drive everybody else moving over. So okay, Barrett, okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is good. I mean, Barrett's approved. This is approved. But if you want to send like a revised PDF of the larger sign and what that, and, but, so and, and just mark, a couple of yeah, mark what the dimensions yeah. are. We'll then confirm like the right height and everything. All Perfect. Right, to make sure. Yeah. You can, yeah. Confirm your blade sign height. Okay. Um, and Hervé will just give you an administrative approval. That's same yeah. as. It's, 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 it's what's the square footage of Barrett Bookstore? Is it? I think it's like twenty six hundred feet. Yeah. yeah. Larger it's than it's they bigger. have now, or it's a little smaller. A little I think. Smaller, than okay. You're gonna have to be a little more efficient in this space, but do you want to do cleaners? Cleaners, yes. Or yeah, we can we can have cleaners is an mm -hmm. email, so that's so Darian oh, yeah. Cleaners, I will begin by saying that uh, Darian Cleaners and Taylors has been in Darien for something like sixty years. Yeah. Under probably two or three different owners. Very cool. So there is an issue in this one because it's not the Darian Cleaners and Taylors. Is not their legal name. Yeah. They used to be Dairy and Cleaners and laundry. laundry. Okay. Because people used to bring their bags of laundry there. Um, she doesn't really do laundry anymore. She's a very, very high quality tailor. And um, she wants to replace laundry with tailor. Yeah. So okay. the question is, you know, do, do, do we need to have her go change her name legally? You know, change the name of her LLC to, Can to you do that? Like it's, a, it's a weird. Because of the age of the business, she bought the business. You know, this is not a newly formed entity. Yep. From the um, family that, that there were two families that have owned this in the last like ten years, but the two previous owners ago uh, owned it for thirty years. Yeah. Um, I'm over. I, I yeah. I think I'm okay with it. What about the established 1941? At first I was away against the established 1941, and then I saw like a historic documentary literally yet last night, and it showed a, a walkable downtown, and it had like a blade sign, coincidentally they had established, mm -hmm. and it really gave the history of the town and showed they had old businesses, and I thought mm -hmm. that would be very short-sighted on us to take away mm -hmm. when we have yeah, those owners who have put yeah, in the time. I yeah, thought it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of yeah. a cool thing. I, I actually think it's great. Yeah. Okay. 
to, it, again, it, it's another way to distinguish uh, this retailer in, mm -hmm. in the downtown yeah. as, mm -hmm. as unique mm -hmm. from a neighborhood. Yeah. She's, yeah. she's I would have suggested if it wasn't on the blade sign, it'd be on the door or something. You know, some yeah. acknowledge. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of yeah. nice being on the blade sign. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 1941. Wow. I kind of want to get Spiro the cobbler back down. Yeah. 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 yeah, he's funny. Um, what about the fonts, though, the change of fonts? I, I see yeah. what she's trying to do and use the Darien kind of sport font. Do you guys? Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. Is that, is that what she has now? Uh, no, she, the, the, the prior owner put the current sign up and um, you know I think it actually I think if I'm not mistaken it looks a lot like she stole the logo from the Dar Darien Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. yeah. It doesn't it looks or Darien like, High School. Yeah, yeah so, it does look like a little frosty. I guess yeah. MJ who owns this business like her kids, kids went, went, through went through the, the Darien School system. I do too. Our community. Mm -hmm. She's into it. Yeah. 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 yeah I don't mind the Darien it's just the two of them go together the cleaners it just feels like it could be something slightly different. I guess I get it's kind of like the old and the new but maybe if cleaners and tailors was more like a helvetica or something you know just a little cleaner oh, it, like this this is like not a serif or serif whatever yeah, yeah. do you but think we can convince her to go with the unique this the single logo the single font or, so, or do you think that part is that really actually we did an alternate that was all the cleaners font that's just there was a little bit more than a little bit more simple oh. Maybe it's out in the email. Oh, there it is. There it is. I'd like to go mm -hmm. out to load. That's kind of boring. Yeah. It is kind yeah, of boring. Yeah, now that you see the other one. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I like the two different fonts. Yeah. yeah. They're almost, I mean, they don't compete against each other. I, I don't know. I, I, I think yeah, that's that dynamic. dynamic. It's really I don't mind blade, so generic. It's interesting, it's right? I, I put them out to the school. Yeah, it's neat. Okay. I so the original. I think the whole original proposal is favored. Yeah. Okay. No changes. So she's not going to put Darien Cleaners and Tailors on the storefront? No, okay. just Darien Cleaners. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And then we Mundine. See? Yeah, it doesn't have to be a long process. See? No, no, we didn't make it half an hour. <laughs> okay, okay. We didn't make it half an hour. We're having fun down on this one. Turn on to the totally. Market Street. The <laughs> <laughs> Airbnb number 58, we Mundine, yep. Uh, so this one is on the, is also in 35 Corbin Drive, mm -hmm. mirror image of the other one on the other side of the residential front door. Um, do you know this store? On yes. The, uh, by opposite San Jose. Yeah. Hinley. Yeah. Hinley. Yeah. They're all the yeah. same. I uploaded the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You were guilty. Very big on the internet. Yeah. It's a very big online. She's a very big online presence. I feel that. Um, all the applications. Yes. Yeah. Only in Darien. Yeah. Only by. Yeah. She's a yeah. Hinley mom. She's her kids are in Hinley yeah. and. Uh, oh really? She lives on near water. Yeah, no, kind of. That's not how it happened, but. Yeah. Okay. She built this incredible online business, kids' clothing, like elevated kids' clothing, and um, and she's adult clothes. Right? Ah, sorry about that. No, I don't think so. Sonny, does she have adult clothes? Yeah. Oh, she does. She yeah. does. Yeah, she has I thought it was all kids. Oh, yeah, she has I have some friends. I thought yeah. I, I thought it was more adult. Maybe I just noticed. Okay, sorry. No, it's a so this is metal cut letters in uh, bronze finish, um, and we've held it against the paint color and thought it looked. Like it, that, they look good together. Um, that's no, her. No light. No light. Um, our our approach with the sign lighting in general was that we don't feel like it's necessary in most cases, and we will come back if individual tenants want to do gooseneck lamps or anything else above their signage. What's that about? That's a, a building. Code. code required emergency wall pack. Uh, Can't get away from Could you not um, <laughs> center Wemo Dean against the storefront window? We may be able to center it over the storefront. It, it looks like we could and has, still have the same I think size. So. I think, yeah. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Because this is definitely centered over the door. Yeah, so yeah. I think that might be better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did we center Darian Cleaners yeah, over the door? Darian Cleaners is centered over the window. Over the window? Okay. Then we should, yeah, then we should do the same. Yeah. She actually changed her logo. I think I got this right, right? She changed her logo to make it work better with this storefront. Yeah. So she totally redid her. If you look at her logo now, it's different. Yeah, it's, I think it's stacked, right? Yeah. 
No. Wasn't it, it different it's though? It's just that she had a plane. There was too much going on, so she. Oh, right. There was the airplane back. flying through the air. Yeah. I actually like the blade sign. The blade sign's very cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's fun. So the blade sign for Darien cleaners, though, is in between the entablature. The, the two entablatures, but this one's mounted on. I'm just thinking that you know we were talking consistency. Yeah. That one's actually mounted onto the uh, oh, to right. that fascia yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. But then if you go to the Darien cleaners, job, it's between the two. I, should, I think we should follow this. Yeah, I do like. I, this I think they both sh they should match that as far as where they're mounted. Mm -hmm. to. Ten heads are better than three. <laughs> <laughs> I said it. Not easy. But that's the one you want. We can we can make daring cleaners consistent with this one. I don't see any issue with that. I think that's better, right? Would it be better than I or between? I, I don't know. I'm kind of no, because I think it's up higher. What's the height of the door? Does that put it up? Oh, I think the bottom that's of the daring cleaner is eight like feet. Eight feet mm -hmm. Okay. So between the two this. is kind of where I'm headed. Yeah. Is there a tenant? Next to them? There's an apartment entrance. Yes, yeah, that's not okay. going to. Okay. Yeah. So they're well separated. One's on the left, one's on the right. Mm -hmm. So which way are you? Which way do you like it? Which way? I, I kind of. It's a I, I, think I, think I, I like the way the Darian cleaner is, the so yeah. that this one moves over in, yeah. in between. In between what? In between the two, uh, the two trims. Oh, oh, I see. Not it, not, not in the on the fascia. Not yeah. on the fascia, yeah. Maybe because it's a little oh, close on to the edge. In on the wall, on the hardy Oh, that's how the Darien cleaners is. Yeah. Is to pick so up. I'm going to go back to Darien cleaners. Do you mind? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, is yeah. it meant to see how it's, it's centered over the window? Or? We're going to center it. Oh, yeah. We're going to center it. We're going to change that. I think that was a good suggestion. So this is this image yeah. here, which I will try to enlarge a little bit. Um, Actually, you can probably do that with your fingers. Yeah, where that crown is. It's mounted here. Oh, that's that's the only way to see the side. And it can't be lower yeah. than that? Is that right. like the... Okay. Okay. It's seven feet, I think. Is, is it seven? Okay. We just have to make sure. I, the door won't hit it because the door opens. <laughs> the other way. Okay, it's right uh, yeah, right that would be well, That's the growing version, but... Hmm. The, uh, the bracket was above the trim on this one. Yeah, it's a little different. No, it's not down on the hard one. It's not on the hard one. I think that might just uh, be. The I sign is that. bigger. It's a little more deeper. I have a feeling. Yeah, no matter where we've landed this, it's not going to hit this door or this door. So I think we can get it in between here. In between the trim above like seven and a half feet. Yeah, and, but I yeah if you look. See what you're saying. It shouldn't be yeah. like in the entablature zone. Yeah, it, get, it does get a little tight up there. Mm -hmm. and but, can, yeah, right what is above. that? Um, yeah, is that a light fixture? I know you just said it, and I missed it. This? Uh, it's an emergency That's... wall pack light. I think the code wise, it's like if you Probably step needs. out, you need to be able to like see okay. the ground. Yeah. Okay. So that one was mounted on the fascia. Mm -hmm. The other one. Which one was on the siding between the, the doors. <laughs> no problem. We know. We, we, we got that. I think that those are good suggestions. And we might be a building sign would be centered on the window. Yeah, and that one is so thin. Okay, we got it. We got yeah. it. Yeah. So we're going to shift this over to the center of the window and you're going to change the amount of the bracket to match Yeah, they're going to two of them each other. Okay, perfect. That's all we have tonight. All right. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> It's so good to see you guys. So um, that was pretty good. So yeah, I, so we'll see you maybe in January to go over final selections of those stories. Let's say February. Okay, whatever. I'm just so looking, by the time, building. yeah, we're going to get into January. He's going to get those drawings cooked. Mm -hmm. We need a little time to just look through it, and then we can file it in mid to late January for February. I'm just thinking okay. filing yeah. dates realistically. Yep. like. Yep, that sounds good. Um, and we'll send anything, any updates here back through by email. Yeah. I don't think you get them there, Ray. Hey, he'll give you a straight approval. Okay. Cool. The, one, the, quick. the Barrett, the Barrett was the one that went straight through. That's good. Yep. That's a approved as it is. And the others had a few little things. Small adjustment. There, there. Yep. Small, small adjustment, adjustment to Cabana. So, mm -hmm. Are you gonna? So the process that we've defined 
uh, I, I can do a letter actually for all those with no, the adjustment. Gonna, if you want, you can do it on Open Gov directly. All right. So instead of sending emails, mm -hmm. now that we have this online update, uh, up uploading thing, yeah. when um, Liz makes comments that are to you know, provided to push you towards administrative approval, mm -hmm. they're going to be online on in these applications. So she is going to have a space where she can make a comment and see that's what needs to be addressed. Okay. And that way it's not just an email to you that can yeah. get lost in the hundreds of emails. <laughs> okay. And it's very transparent because the public knows <laughs> what was decided. Okay. So that way we can't lose record yeah. and at the same time, yeah. It's there, and when you and you can see. And how should, uh, should I upload revisions to? Yes. Okay. All yeah. right. So I want you, you, see, you tell me the there. Were, in the yeah. name, please put revisions, okay. so that I don't have to see you know, a lot yeah. of files and they're so, all called no, the same. Okay. Cool. Sounds good. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. It's so good to see you guys. All right. Thanks. Um, okay. Final uh, points on the agenda. We actually do not have notes from um, from our November meeting, so we will review those and approve those in January. Um, and I'm going to actually put a vote that we're doing another one. This is it's too late, it's 9.40 p.m. So, it's 9.41 p.m. I'm going to adjourn this meeting. Sounds good? All right. All right. Thank you. John, thank you.